All right, Taylor, the stream started, so you can get her going. Or Nick, maybe you introduce the uh, what's gonna what's gonna take place. Stream started, so you guys are good to go. Maybe you just introduce what's gonna happen, Nick, and then let Taylor take it. Yeah, Taylor, you go ahead. All right, everybody, welcome to today's session. My name's Taylor, I'm on the marketing team at Art Storefronts. One of the people putting together our many resources and consulting and mentoring our members on a regular basis in workshops like these. Today's session is for non-members, so this is a free, wide open session, and how it's a little bit different than what you get as a member. Our member workshops, which we hold five times a week at this point on various topics, are largely tactical, right? So it's giving uh, our members ongoing advice, tweaks to their strategy, checking in with them, seeing how far they've gotten since we last spoke, and uh, making sure their business is always growing. By contrast, today will be largely about what we call unclogging the drain. Before you're even ready for tactical or strategic advice, you need to get the big thing out of the way. And we found through these non-member workshops that uh, most artists and photographers out there have something. They have a big thing in their way. It can be a mindset problem, some kind of self-limiting belief that if you just simply do away with it, the path becomes clear. Or it could be something more practical like uh, not, not doing something Something that you really need to be doing. Whatever it is, we're gonna find out about it today and fix it for you. Before we get into all that good stuff, I have two segments for you up top here, opening remarks. The first one, stuff you need to know about this workshop, how it works. The second, a little bit of an overview on art storefronts, uh, just to get some context, set the stage, you know, who we are and what we do. First up, the need to know information about today's workshop. To get in line to chat with us, right? To, to get unmuted and start to uh, get some help, you need to use the raise hand button in Zoom. So at the bottom of your Zoom window, you'll see the participants button. You're gonna hit that and that'll open this on the right hand side where you'll find the blue raise hand button. You hit that and that will do it, raise hand. You'll see up here, your name will show the, the blue raise hand button. That's the system we use. We go top to bottom, uh, unmuting everyone that has their hand raised and uh, helping them out. So if you have a question up front, you know you wanna talk to us, you can do that right now and get early in line so you'll be one of the first people to get some help today. If something comes up later and you, you don't have a question yet but something comes to mind, you can always do it later in the session too. The second thing you need to know is that we have a page that we call the show notes and that's where we aggregate all of the links to resources that come up today. So if uh, one of us says we have a really good video about that or we say we actually have a podcast episode that would help you out. You don't need to be hunting around for that in the moment. We're doing that for you. We're collecting it all. Here's what the page looks like. We're going to send this to you after today's session ends. We're going to email it to you. So you'll find the replay at the top, right? So if you have to leave early or you arrived late, uh, or even if you missed it all together, uh, you can always catch up with the replay here. And then this is the show notes section I was talking about. All the links will be there, everything that came up. So you'll have that. Don't worry about looking anything up in the moment. We're taking care of it. Uh, I should also mention on this page while you're here, there are a couple of request a demo buttons. Those are your go-to spots for either signing up if you just want to get going or reaching out to us, having a more in-depth chat about our features and our pricing and stuff like that. That's how you start those conversations. If you just want to do your research and uh, get to know us, see if there's a good fit you hit the request the demo button you fill out the form and we'll get in touch that's how you do that okay second segment today uh, what even is art storefronts okay so here is the very quick overview and like I said, the demo is where they go in depth. They'll do an hour for you. They'll answer as many questions as you have. But today, I don't know how many people here already know everything about us, nothing about us. So I'll just go right down the middle and do a very quick overview. Um, there are two halves to art storefronts. There is the website software, right? So that is the art selling website. And then there's the marketing program, and that is really the fuel for that website engine. The, the website could be fantastic. We believe it's the best website software for artists ever designed. We really believe that, and I'll show you why in a moment. However, 
all of the power of that website is meaningless if there's no one on it. So the marketing program is what completes the whole membership. Uh, I'll show you both halves now, starting with the website. There are hundreds of features, hundreds of features. It is very difficult to give you a full overview of everything that's going on with this software. So I think I will just show you uh, what's really most important, right? The product page. At the end of the day, everything on your website is designed around getting people here to the product page where then they can check out and buy your artwork. So what is the big deal with these product pages? Um, to explain that, let's just clarify that I'm showing you an artwork product page today. That's the important one. We also have what we call standard product pages, and that's where you can sell anything. If you have ceramics, jewelry, uh, clothing, you can sell all of those product types on art storefronts. It does not need to be solely wall art. But I wanna show you the wall art product page because there's an important thing to uh, get straight here. These pages are set up specifically to sell wall art. That that's in contrast to a website provider like Squarespace that has to have their product pages work for all product types, whether you're selling artwork or toilet paper or electric scooters, right? It works for everything, which creates a master of none situation when it comes to their features. They have not considered artwork in particular, so they have not addressed the problems, the challenges with selling artwork online like we have. The big deal with selling artwork online is that there is a lot of friction. It is not a product like toilet paper or electric scooters where you want what it does and you find the one that you like and you buy it. Uh, it's a little more complicated than that. Buying art is an emotional journey. You fall in love with the work. You get to know the artist through their emails and their social media posts. You save up for it. Uh, eventually you get the wall space open, but even then you have questions like how, which piece should I select and how is it going to look with my uh, wall paint color? How is it going to work with the other uh, pieces of artwork in my collection? Will my spouse like it? How do I show it to them in the best way? Um, what are the media types available? I've never heard of this word acrylic. Is that worth looking into? Uh, what size is going to work for my space? I don't want it to look too small or, of course, too big. Uh, all of these questions are where you lose sales. People have those questions. Your website does not answer them, and they never get it answered. They leave. Uh, you cannot rely on people reaching out to you actively to ask these questions right? Your website needs to passively answer them for you all the time. Whenever that question comes up, whichever one it is, your website comes in and says, oh, here you go. Got the help for you right here. Problem solved. Keep going. Keep making the purchase, right? That is what maximizes art sales. Let's start by just looking at the layout of the page. Image on the left, buying options on the right. Not below, not somewhere down the page you need to scroll to find. Everything is uh, visible on one screen and it's all expanded. There's not drop downs. Everything is image based. This is like the express lane to checking out artwork online. Beyond that, you can offer every version of an image side by side. The open edition prints are right here. With one click, you can start shopping the limited edition prints, signed and numbered, highest quality, that sort of thing. With another click, you're over to the original version of that image. If the original is available, uh, you can step up and buy it right here. Finally, the multi-panel. This is where you break up a single image into three prints, right? So it's a huge upsell. You turn one print sale into three, very sleek and modern presentation. I love that one. If you don't offer one of these media types, like you're a photographer, so you don't have originals, uh, you wouldn't have this tab on your website. This is just showing all the possible options, but you'll set it up to whatever you actually offer. So if you don't have limited editions, it's gone. It's not on your actual site. Uh, it adapts to what you actually sell. Within these, let's look at the open edition prints. Now, the big challenge there is explaining the media types. The average art consumer does not know terms like uh, canvas gallery wrap, G clay print, uh, metal, acrylic. They don't know what these look like. They don't know what they are. So it becomes difficult to make a smart decision um, until they do. So the website's job is to educate them very quickly and visually. So here's how we've done that. When you click on one of the media types, the uh, preview over on the left-hand side uh, adapts in a subtle way. So this adds a little bit of virtual depth to this image because we selected the canvas option. That clues people in, oh, this is that traditional thick gallery look. Beyond that, maybe they don't know what metal is, uh, you can hover on these tool tips here, the little question marks, and then you can launch a video. These are custom videos we've produced just for our members that show every angle of these media types and summarize the benefits. They're about 15 seconds long and they instantly create that connection of, oh, that is what I want. Very powerful. Um, 
Beyond those buying tools, you have the visualization tools. This is for questions like, uh, I love the piece, I know I want it on metal, I'm just not sure if it's really gonna look good in my space or uh, how large I should buy. That's where the visualization tools come in. Wall preview is the, uh, the starter there. Uh, you can select a room type and you can get going very quickly, a good representation of uh, what size you need. Right, so let's step it up. The 30, that looks good. The 32 looks even better, right? You're stepping it in. We've got wall color here. These aren't random. These are the top selling uh, paint colors from last year from Benjamin Moore, Sherwin Williams. So there's a high likelihood your buyers will actually find their real wall color right in here. Very simple, very fast. Uh, so this helps clear up some of those questions, but we take it to the next level with live room preview. You can see the button here and also on the product page right here, live preview AR. This is an augmented reality tool that allows people to use their mobile or tablet device to uh, visualize the artwork on their actual wall, not a virtual space, not a hypothetical wall, their actual wall space. So you can see in this video here, it projects it onto their wall. They can start to select the sizing and see how everything looks. They can move it around the wall space. And now there is no translation problem, right? It is not close to their wall color or whatever. It is their real actual space. The most powerful part of this feature, because other websites have this type of functionality via an app. Ours works in the web browser. There is no downloading and installing an app. They're right in the checkout process. They pop open this tool. It works on their phone. They close the tool once they're happy and they continue checking out. That is the game changing part of it. So overall, I think that does a good job of summarizing uh, a few of the features of the product page here, but that is your, your drop in the bucket overview. It goes on and on. Art Buyer AI recognizes and informs you when a likely collector has visited your site. Uh, we have tools that allow you to fire off very quick emails to welcome personally new subscribers, to uh, reach out when someone has added something to their cart but not checked out, right? Give you a shot to close that sale. The features really go on and on QR codes, selling sheets. Um, I couldn't possibly summarize it today. Request a demo if you want to see a little bit more. Um, but that is the engine, the, the Ferrari in your driveway. Let's talk about the fuel that goes in it, the marketing program. Uh, of course, when it comes to artists, you guys do not want to be marketing. I understand that completely. You want to be creating the work and selling it. That's it. But the in-between step is very necessary and it is marketing. So let's talk about how we make that process as painless as possible while still getting you uh, doing the work that you must do to grow a small business. The centerpiece to our marketing program, where it all comes back to, is the art marketing calendar. That is the core piece. Everything else just supports this. The marketing calendar is a daily plan that tells you exactly what to do every single day of the year. It provides you with all the email language you'll need to pull off sales, a Black Friday sale, something like that. And it gives you the advice that you need to turn your casual followers into leads, that's people on your email list, your leads into first time buyers, and your buyers into lifelong repeat collectors. We walk you through it on a daily basis. It is not overwhelming. It is not a knowledge base where you need to watch 55 videos and then just implement what they said. All you need to do is look at today. Uh, we're on Wednesday. What do they say to do? I have three tasks to complete. It should take me about 30 minutes. Let's do it. Three tasks, one, two, three, knocked it out. You have done what you need to do for your business today. It's that simple. Let's look at what this thing is. So uh, up top, attention newbies. This is a section with four steps we want our new members to complete before they get down to the full calendar. Uh, some highlights here, we have a workshop every Wednesday where our marketing team will look at your new Art Storefront's website, go through the major pages, and make sure that it's set up according to best practices from a marketing point of view, right? So before you even launch, you make sure you're gonna be closing every possible sale. Uh, we also have a campaign, a 14-day campaign that we want all new members to execute. It's, it's just like the calendar. It tells you what to do day by day. Post this message on Facebook and post this message on Instagram and send this email. Very simple to follow. And that uh, campaign is themed around celebrating your new website in a way that will generate you some leads and maybe some sales to right up top. So we ask everyone to do that before getting into the calendar with everyone else. Below the newbie section, we have the live workshop schedule that has uh, your look at what's coming up this week, when you can join us in Zoom in our members only workshops. 
We have some announcements that go here. We have a strategic overview, step three. This section is written by our CEO and our director of marketing. And in it, they give you their advice, what they would do if they were running your business this month, where your head should be at, right? So the, the calendar below is your daily bit by bit look. This section is the high level overview, what you should be thinking about your major goals for the month. And then you have the calendar itself. You can see it's day by day. Um, we have a bit of hierarchy here where we put the most important tasks in red and everything else in black. Nothing goes on here. That's not important to do, right? So the black tasks are not unimportant. It's just that if you have very limited time, uh, you have family obligations, a part or full-time job, and you can't get to the entire calendar, no problem. Uh, do the red stuff first. And then if you have extra time, do the black tasks. Uh, most people have no problem completing 75% uh, or more of the calendar though. It's not a huge obligation because we do so much of the work upfront for you in terms of writing the subject lines you should be sending and giving you lots of examples whenever anything uh, needs to be created. Uh, it's day by day. You've got the major task of the day, and then you've got go to tasks, a button that jumps you down the page to the full explanation of the day. It'll give you an objective for the day and then break down uh, what you need to be doing into tasks. One, two, three, do these things. Very easy to follow. Um, everything else, like I said, supports this system. So our workshops in general are supporting our members as they're following this calendar. Uh, you check in with us, you say, I did the Saturday Sunday task and I got these results. What can I do to boost them even further? Or uh, I see next week I need to be doing this, but I don't have my head around it fully yet. Can you uh, talk to me a little bit more about it? All that sort of stuff. We make sure our members are moving together through the calendar all at the same time. When we do some new right so we've recently started doing these live art shows we have a playbook on how to execute a live art show from home and our members are having some huge successes with this selling dozens of pieces from home on Instagram or Facebook live um, that is an example of something where after everyone does this together we have hundreds maybe even a thousand people running these live shows simultaneously then the following week we have uh, six or seven or eight of the people that had the most success with that strategy come on a live workshop for our members and just talk through what they did. We hear out how did they address it specifically? Was there anything that was a little different than anyone else? How did they see that success? Um, that way all of the members can hear what's working from the other members and then we go ahead and update all of our playbooks with the new learnings. So there is nothing in this program that is static, that is a dead uh, blog post style article from six years ago that may or may not be relevant today. We are updating these things on a weekly basis, checking in with our members uh, if enough people were that this part didn't work for them, it didn't really seem to do anything, it gets pulled out, right? We are live adjusting all of our resources so that when you join in, you get the learnings of the past several years just baked into everything. So I've talked a lot about how our members interact with us, get mentorship and consulting from us via the workshops, but we also have a venue for them to get help from each other when they need to talk shop or just get input from a whole bunch of artists really quick on a topic like, you know, how do you address shipping? How do you go about uh, tax, some kind of tax situation? All that sort of stuff. The Small Wins Facebook group is the place for that. It's private just for our members, and that is where they go to ask for help, share their, their small wins, as we call it, you know, all the little success successes that stack up into a successful business. Uh, does anyone know how to patent or copyright a design? Get some help from our members on that. So this is the place to go uh, when you need to uh, quickly pull a huge group of people uh, that, that have gotten further than you, right? That already have gotten where you want to go uh, and have the learnings, the quick learnings that they can summarize for you. Between all of these resources that all fall back on the calendar, you have a marketing system that keeps you in line, that keeps you moving, that does not simply present you with 1,000 hours of content and asks you to explore it at your own pace, figure out for yourself which things you should be following and which things you should ignore. Uh, uh -uh. This is about the calendar. It's about uh, cutting out all the time you waste thinking about what you should and shouldn't be doing. That is the time saver uh, here, the big game changer. You no longer need to think about all the possible things. We've already done that. We've highlighted what you should be doing, the best return on your time.
All right, that is my uh, rant. I was, I was gonna say short rant. I know it wasn't short, but it's very difficult to compress everything we have going on into uh, a format like this. So thanks for listening. Uh, again, the website is your engine. The marketing program is the fuel for that engine. Uh, so with that said, let's get into the consulting. Uh, I think we're all on the same page now, so let's do that drain unclogging I talked about in the beginning. Uh, I'll turn it over to our hosts. Um. Yeah, so on that note, let me kind of give you the, a, a brief, brief intro. Now, we say that there's five pillars, um, really, of an art business, and really, like, ultimately, what we're aiming for, what we like, is we want our customers to be on the path towards a six-figure a year plus business. We, we we sort of arrived at that six figures a year. It's it's a good target, and you know it's more than double what the national average is for a solo entrepreneur, small business in the U.S. today, and it's really where everyone wants to go, right now. You know, do we have customers that are over this? Yes, we do. Is it the vast majority of them? No, it's not. It's somewhat of an aspirational number, but there is a path towards a business of that size, and that's what we teach. That's what we articulate. That's what we get our customers on. And we believe, to be honest with you, that right now, this moment in time, there has never been a better time as an artist, as a photographer, as a, a creator to get there. And, and why is that? You know, technology and disruption and all the rest of the buzzwords or adoption, if you like, it, it has its own timeline, right? And we believe that whereas maybe it was six or seven or eight or nine years down the road that it would have been the greatest time ever to be an artist photographer selling, it, it, it's been accelerated by this pandemic. This pandemic has taken trends that would have taken six or seven or eight or nine years and just truncated it down into like six or seven or eight or nine months. It's been bananas. And so we think this this path of getting to a six figure a year plus business as a solo artist, photographer, creator, never been a better time. So let's talk about the five pillars uh, of an art business or, or you could even say just presentation here. But number one, we call unclog the drain. And having talked to all these artists and photographers over all these years, we find that before we can even get into the other four pillars, uh, we have to get your drain unclogged before they can even flow through. And what is the drain clog? Call them self-limiting beliefs. Uh, call them complete nonsense uh, that someone out there in the market is put in your head. Um, you know, my business will be will be successful when and insert thing that here that's preventing you from doing that. Uh, that perfection that runs uh, endemic in artist in in photographer society. Like, if, uh, you know, I, I just got to get it. Just I just got to get it perfect and just get my website perfect. The days turn into weeks, turn into months, turn into years. You take a look back. No constructive sets steps or very few have actually been made in the art business, right? And so we find on these calls that the, the, the primary thing that we need to do is get whatever is stuck in your drain out. I'll just get started when I get all my pieces photographed. My niche is different. I just need high net worth individuals. I'm just looking for that high, high net worth uh, list. Uh, there's some sort of website out there that you can magically upload all your images to and not do anything else and you're gonna have a six figure a year business, right? There's all of these various different things that are stuck in the drain. Once we get into the Q&A, we'll find the majority of the conversation will probably start there. That's number one. Number two, you have to understand the business model. It is D, T, C, or die in today's day and age. What do I mean? Direct to consumer. No middleman, no other hands in your pocket. You have to create and sell directly to the consumer. That's the way the market's going. You need to own the data on your customers. You need to be building your own email list. You need to be marketing regularly, and you can't have any other middlemen in, in the picture or stated in another way. You can't have anyone else setting the rules, right? Because what happens in a situation like this, i.e. the pandemic, i.e. all offline sources are pretty much croaked, i.e. your galleries are embargoed and closed. Someone else is setting the rules to your business in that situation. Situation. That is an untenable situation to be in. It is D, T, C, or die. We'll get into that. Number three, the secret to effective marketing. Okay, This is something that all of you need to understand if you want a six-figure, year-plus business. And I can't even believe I'm going to tell you. They've told me not to tell you. I'm going to tell you. There is no damn secret. There never has been a secret. It's two things. One, focusing whatever time, energy, and effort you have on the highest leverage marketing opportunities that exist today. Not chasing shiny objects, not trying some new thing for a couple of weeks, let me just dip the toe in here, no. Focused on what actually works. We teach you this, we tell you this, we have data. No one can call BS on me on this one, I've seen it all. We know what the highest leverage ROI, return on investment, time, effort, treasure of yours and, and it, uh, are. 
That's number one. Number two, it's just doing it consistently. It's doing it consistently all year long. So many artists, so many photographers, they get fired up, they get hot and bothered, they start in on some sort of marketing effort, whether it's the highest ROI or not, they do it for a couple of months, they're like, where the heck are my results, and they quit. The consistency is so, so important. That's the secret to marketing, that's it. High ROI marketing activities, consistency, okay? Number four, the inputs, what we like to call the inputs. And, you know, there's variations of this, like you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with, right? I love that. Uh, put another way, but let's put it in this way in today's day and age. You don't realize how powerful this one is until take the next two weeks and shut the news off completely out of your life. No print journalism, no TV journalism, no radio. What you'll find after those two weeks and you run that little experiment is all of a sudden you're in a better mood, you're a happier person, you love your neighbors, you love your country, you, and everything just feels great. When you have these n these incorrect in inputs, these things that are telling you you're a horrible person and your country sucks and the whole world's pulling apart all the time, it has an effect on you, right? In the art business, the inputs are, it tends to be all of these charlatans, quacks, you know, they're selling, they're selling, they're selling vials of this, that, and the other off the back of a wagon, right? Like you got to go do this. You got to go do that. Don't do that. That's a terrible way to do it. There's some marketplace over here. All of these inputs somehow get into artists and photographers heads and almost exclusively, they're all coming from people that have no success, that have sold no art online, that do not have a hundred K year plus business. And so if you, if you understand that and you're able to sort of audit uh, your inputs and ensure that they are the right inputs, uh, people that are actually seeing success, the marketing techniques and tactics that are actually working, that are backed up by data. If you get the nonsense inputs out, you're in a much better place and you're going to be on the path. You're going to be in the right direction. And the fifth is just perspective, the perspective of how, of how long it takes. And, you know, go ahead, I'll unmute everybody. Let me know the artist or photographer that working on their business for three months has a six figure year business. I'll wait right? Like it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. It takes three to five years. Okay. Of grinding to build anything of value. And especially if this is your first time pivoting to a DTC direct to consumer business model, where you own all the contacts, you do all the marketing. So those are the five pillars of sort of what we define uh, as a successful art business, what we advocate that all artists and photographers get onto this path and all of our customers are on it currently and they're on their way up. So that's what we do. That defines it. Um, Nick, over to you, and uh, you can take it. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Taylor. Um, yeah, the, the, the thing that I'll say, guys, and, and just to introduce myself, my name is Nick Friend. I am owner and CEO of Art Storefronts, okay? And um, I'm excited to take your guys' questions today. Um, so before I, I, I want to comment on what Patrick was just talking about a second ago. But before I do that, I just want to remind you guys that if you want to start raising your hands, now is a good time. Um, so just a reminder of what Taylor was showing. If you take your mouse and you hover over Zoom, uh, the Zoom window, and then you see the participants button at the very bottom, click that. It should open like a panel on your right-hand side, and you'll see a raise hand button right there. And if you do that, it'll form a line. Um, and then I can actually like unmute you guys one by one for whoever wants to talk to us um, and ask a question. And uh, of course, that's what this is for, right? That's what this is for, is to give you guys value. Um, see where you're at. What are you stuck with? What's the number one thing that you think is in your way that you need help with? Uh, we're here to help you with that. So if you guys want to go ahead and do that, you can also you know, put a question in the chat window, um, the chat that's going down there, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll address those as well. Um, but yeah, so the thing that I want to add on top of that, all those five pillars, there's just there's so much... There is so much good stuff in there that I really hope that you guys wrote them down. Um, and if you didn't, you know, this will be replayed on, uh, once, this, once this session is done, you'll be able to go into our Facebook feed and rewind it and like go back to the beginning. Um, you won't be able to do that until it's done though. Um, but it, you know, I've spent 20 years in the art industry um, as an entrepreneur. For those who, of you who don't know about me, I founded a company in 2003 called Breathing Color. Breathing Color is the, big, the biggest manufacturer of fine art canvas, photography paper, art paper, metal, you know, all sorts of uh, print media for high quality art and photography reproduction. So we, we manufacture like the rolls of canvas and the sheets and of, of paper and things like that for printing. And um, so I have been working with 
you know, artists and photographers for the last 20 years in this industry. And what I can say right now is I am so excited for all of you guys um, because despite th the fact that there's a lot of like negative things going on in the macroeconomic situation, like the pandemic, you know, the lockdowns that have happened and, and all of that, you know, what's so interesting is just how, um, how, you know, I think it's, it's, it, it, it's been said in two different ways. The two different ways are like, you know, uh, technology adoption has accelerated 10 years in a matter of the last four months. Another way that it's been said is the year 2030 just got pulled all the way back to 2020, you know, and it's, it's such a fascinating thing. And, and, and what's, what that means is that the market was going here anyway. Um, it was going to a more online world. Like all you have to do is look at every year, the way that e-commerce sales have been just accelerating. Right. And that includes in the art business. We've been publishing those numbers for the last five years. There's a company called Hiscox that does like a big market study. And every year, you know, the, the amount of the on offline market that moved online um, was just growing like, you know, at a very fast pace. And so all that happened was with the lockdowns is all of it moved online, literally 100% of it, you know, and now it's probably 90% uh, or 95%. I'm sure there's some places that are open somewhere, not very many. And I don't know how many consumers are actually going into retail um, in what they call the retail apocalypse. But what's, what's most important to me um, and, and it's because it's such a big deal for all of you guys is that, you know, when you really think about the entire, if we just look at the entire United States, right. And you think about every gallery that used to exist, you know, like a year ago, let's just say, and all of the art shows and you, and you put little pins in the map everywhere that was going on, you would just see pins like just scattered and peppered throughout the entire United States. And those offline, you know, uh, markets, let's call them, or the demand, the people who would go in person and buy that art, you had no access to, okay? The only access you guys had was the local art show that you went to, or two or three of them, right? And maybe the local couple of galleries that, or, or the, the handful of galleries, if you were lucky, that, that might have sold your work. But all of the rest of those pinpo you know, pinpoints all over the country, you had no access to that demand. There's nothing you could do to, to participate in that, right? That whole game has changed. The more business, the more demand that goes online, the more demand that you guys have access to, okay? And so it's a big, big deal for all of you. And that's what gets me so excited is because for the individual artist or photographer essentially running their business out of their house, right? You know, or it's just a small business either way. You have the biggest opportunity that you've ever had before. And I see it. I see it full and well. I mean, the, the photographers and artists at art storefronts who got started on all of this years ago, right? Three years ago, five years ago, selling direct, doing all the things that we're, we're advocating, right? Because it's the only way you can control your own destiny. They are seeing records, record levels of sales during this entire pandemic, like exploding. And we even talked about, um, I've mentioned this a few times recently, just because it, it's, it's on our minds, but uh, there's a photographer um, that we work with, Jonah Allen, who um, he sold 35, he broke his all-time record. He sold $35,000 of his photography in June. Okay, I'm waiting to hear what his July number was. Um, I think he was on track to get into the 40s. We'll have to check. But it was uh, an all-time record month for him. And you know, everything got shut down for him as it did for everybody else, all the offline. And so he had to make that happen on his own. And so, you know, if you're doing your own direct marketing to your own customers and, and, and you're building your own list that you own, this is how you can control your destiny, guys. And so you, this, the thing is with the direct business model, the direct versus the indirect, right? The indirect is when you're going through galleries and third parties, is that it, it's only a matter of time until the indirect just gets pulled out from underneath you. And that's why entrepreneurs in any industry, any industry know that you got to build a direct business. To me, having been in the industry as long as I have, I really truly believe that that one is the biggest source of the starving artist problem. I think it's the number one thing. If there's one thing you guys take away, please take this away. Do not build an indirect business. If you do, there's nothing wrong with selling through galleries or publishers, but it's only wrong 
if all your eggs are in that basket and you don't have the understanding that that is the gravy, that's not anything to build a foundation on, okay? It's the number one thing I want you guys to know and I want you to spread it everywhere because everyone needs to know this. If you build your business based on indirect, you're gonna be in that hamster wheel, right? Where you're in a gallery and you're out and who knows what's gonna happen with these galleries. But you're, you're, you're kind of, you kind of take two steps forward and then you take another two back and you're never really getting anywhere. The only way to get consistent sales, right? And build a valuable business is to sell direct. So please, please make that something that you do correctly. Okay, so I've got a couple of hands up, Kevin York and Roger Merchant. Um, Kevin's first, uh, I will go to you and unmute you. Kevin, go ahead, you might have to unmute your mic. Hello, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, how are you? Very good, thank you. Um, so, you know, unclogging the drain, right? <laughs> yes. Indeed. Okay. So, um, real quick, um, some of my work or some of the work that I think is, and I've never done, I've never sold anything online. So this would be the beginning. Okay. But you've sold offline. I've been a professional photographer, uh, for 33 years, did uh, commissioned work, um, had things published in magazines, had I, I somewhat successful. Okay, so have you sold, have you like sold any art though? Like have you ever sold prints of it or not really? No, not really. Okay. No, I, I built a website um, that is no, not up right now. Um, I'm actually in the mortgage business now because I kind of, I moved from the photography business a few years ago because I kind of saw some things going on that I wasn't really happy with. But I have quite a large archive of things. Um, now, uh, a lot of the work is not model released. There are celebrities. I mean, I, I photographed race car drivers. Um, I photographed, uh, you know, regular people. Um, so, but some of the work is, I consider art. And some, some of it, I think people might want to use those who are, let's say, fans of Dale Earnhardt. I have a number of really nice portraits of this guy. Um, but I know that they're not, but I guess the point that I'm getting at is back in the day, if it was, if it's commercial use, and I'm not sure if this is commercial, commercial use in the way that people are using it for their own, people are buying art from these art from your site pretty much to put on their own walls. So it's not being used in an ad or being used in something like that. If you know what I'm trying to get at. Yes. Um, so again, this is kind of unclogging the drain. Are these images, do you think these images are worth, you know, putting on a site like this? I mean, I have other stuff too that I think is, that I think I can use this site for, but do you think these images are something that I could, um, I could do something with? Well, I definitely think you can do something with them. Um, to tell you, we have people who have gotten explicit rights in situations like that. You know, like where they just contacted them and said, hey, this is I'm what listening. I'm thinking about doing. Yeah. I'm listening. Oh, okay. Um, and, uh, and then we have people who just kind of went for it, you know? And so it's, it's, kind of, uh, um, it's kind of in your hands to like, and, and you should, like, ultimately you should contact these people and say, hey, I'm looking to sell these as prints and whatever. Because normally you would just do like some sort of a licensing deal where you would end up giving them like 10% of the sales, you know, 10 to 15%. That's very common. Um, but, you know, right off the bat, if you wanted to like test the market, you could make a couple of prints and do it. It's kind of up to you. Yeah, this is an image here, Mario Andretti at, uh, at Le Mans. Okay. Stuff is like fantastic. Stuff, like stuff like this. It's um, fantastic. Thank you. Um, I mean, now actually to believe it or not, Magnaflow stole this off of my website and had it in their ads. And I called them up and I, I called them up and I said, hey, who's the photographer? Well, I love that picture. Anyway, long story short, I ended up getting $20,000 out of them. <laughs> but, wow. but yeah, but the point that I'm making is, is just that if someone's buying this picture to hang on their wall, that's not necessarily going, going to Magnaflow, you know what I mean? Or going to some sort of corporate entity. That's I mean, I actually know Mario Andretti. I mean, I guess I could ask him, but, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm just telling you that there's people who just sell those 
And, um, and, and like, we've got, we've got a guy, we've got a photographer who does, I can't, I, I can't remember his name. Um, but he took pictures of Sinatra, the Beatles. I mean, you go down the list and they're all on his website and he's selling them as art and he didn't do it before. He's kind of like in your position. He just started doing it like six months to a year ago. Yeah, right? so I, he didn't I, have licensing deals of all of them. You guys own the rights to those images, like as well. The they, that's the, well, that's it, debatable. But I but think it's I, I think it's wishy washy. But yes. but I think here's the here's the thing. The normal way, and I'll just tell you this as a as a, a bear, as an experienced business person because I've started six companies. Right, the way these things normally go is you start selling, um, and you know if someone wants to contact you and stop you. They normally do that. They don't do it to stop you. They do it because they want a licensing fee. Right. It's like a patent troll. You know what I mean? Or, in, or a, it might be, but if you're too small to care about, which most photographers and artists are, I've actually never, ever heard or talked to one get shaken down. Yeah, I hear so, I, I, I agree. But you just I, plan, I, you plan that in and you just know that that may come. And you may even want to like, you may even want to lob them an email and they may not get back to you. But I mean, if you're the guy who lobbed an email and said, I want to do this, like and offer you 10% and like you have that, that's like a great position to be in when somebody comes back. Yeah. Cause I, I don't think, I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe somebody will buy these, maybe they won't. I mean, I well, have they'll buy that, those. I, I have a lot of that. I have a lot of that stuff and uh, they will buy those. So, um, all right. So I don't want to eat up all the time, but one other question that I do have, um, naming of the site. Um, I have a, so my commercial name is Velvet Grit. Okay. I just, it's, it's a name that I used that I thought was very, uh, it was just memorable. Uh, people remembered it. Kevin, you were like, who, who knows? Like Kevin, you are. That's a pretty good name too, though. It's, most, that? It's, it's I said it's a pretty good name too. It's easy to remember. Yeah, I mean, uh, so you said velvet I, grit. I, yeah, velvet grit. Yeah. I would call it velvet grit fine art. Yeah, well, I, I wanted to use I wanted to use that name because the other thing is I'm in the mortgage business right now, so it's kind of like if I start putting stuff on Facebook, Kevin York. Okay, what do you? You're back in photography. You're you know. So I'm trying to I, that that's that's what I want to. So I think you should totally, I think you should totally leverage your history and, you know, success and credibility as a photographer, as part of your brand and your marketing, like a thousand percent, thousand percent. So if that's what you're known by, I would take it right over here. And, you know, because you, you're able to say, I've been doing this for 33 years, whatever. And now I'm launching this fine art site where right. I'm selling these amazing iconic images, you know, and so forth. Okay. Cause I'm going to talk to Reed. I, I, I put in a thing to talk a to demo request. So, yeah. So we'll, uh, I guess we'll get there. We'll yeah. Get there on that. All right, I, think, I think what, what else do you have? Do you have like landscapes and other stuff aside? Yeah, I have, that? um, I have things that I did in Cuba. Um, I have, um, I, I have some kind, yeah, I have some stuff like that. Uh, more of my work was more portraits when I was, when I was working. Um, so it's a lot more portrait work, but I did, but I, but I did, uh, I do have a lot of car images, auto images, uh, those kinds of things. So I love that. Um, I think, I mean, I don't have a, I don't have a huge library. I do have a lot of stuff, but I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. You, but, don't, um, you don't need a lot. You don't need a huge library. But what's in my head right now. I'm thinking how, what, like, I'm again, trying to clean out the drain. How, what do I, where do I start? Like, what do I put up there? Um, and I don't want to just throw money down a drain. That's what I'm trying to not do because I've listened. I've, I've, I've done, I've done all the ads and I've done all the stuff and I've paid tens of thousands of dollars for stuff over the years that, yeah, it was a great opportunity. Oh, you're going to make a whole bunch of money and then you never make anything. Yeah. Um, but again, your situation is a little different for what I see is that you're telling me, Hey, you're paying for this, but you know what? If you don't do the work, you're not going to get squat. Well, here's, and, here's the way that I would do the work. <laughs> that's correct. That's exactly right. Because it's, this is real. <laughs> it's not, yeah. this is, I'm teaching you, we're teaching you guys at art storefronts how to like the way that I frame it. Okay. The way that I frame art storefronts being the owner and the founder, right? Like it's, it's important to hear it in my words is 
I am trying to equip you with like in the cheapest, absolute least expensive way possible by a mile to get properly equipped, right? To actually give this business a shot. Or if you already have an art business or a photography business to, you know, when you get properly equipped, you can really take it to the next level, you know, two, three, four, five X what you're currently doing or what you've done before. And so in your case for, you know, uh, the, the, the entry fee and the, the monthly fee, you're going to have the wind at your back to give this thing the best shot possible to make something out of it. And yeah, it's, it's up to you, right? Like that's the, 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 the individual artist or photographer is the variable. Everybody at art storefronts has the exact same technology, the exact same access to all the marketing resources and the mentorship and the private consulting sessions. The variable is you guys, right? Individually. Yeah, and so, I, I'm sorry, because I, I kind of got out of the photography business. So I was tired of being a commissioned photographer who was doing other people's pictures. Um, that's why I kind of got away from it. And when I found this about two months ago or so, I was like, Ooh, okay, this could be, this could be the, this could be my ticket. So now I want to have some, I want to use my art storefronts as a, as a vehicle, like I'm shooting for my art storefront. I'm right. shooting for, I'm shooting for this business now, not for an ad agency or right. a magazine who's telling me I have to get this shot, this shot, this shot. Oh, and you have to do it this way, this way, and this way. Yep. So that's why I, I'm very interested in this situation. Yep, yep, I, I fully understand. What I would do is, here's the thing, is like there's a, like a, a famous uh, law, it's called Pareto's Law, the 80-20, right? So 80% of your sales are going to come from 20% of your images, right. okay? And so looking at your situation, what I would do is take your cars and take your, your famous people and all that stuff, get them up on a site, pick your best, maybe 20 images that you think in any of these categories, get them all up, launch it and start marketing. That's what you need right. to do. Yeah. Cause yeah. you have to get to market. The only, you have yeah. to, you know, you got to get out there. And so you have to obviously invest a little bit to just give this business a shot. Um, but, uh, but you got to get it out there and you got to market it and you got to, you got to give it a chance. You got to give it one or two years to like build it, you know, and try to build something out of it. It's just yeah. like any business, like you're, you can't well, build I'm a business in one month or three months. Business, believe me, man, it doesn't. That's not overnight, okay? Not <laughs> no no business is. Yeah. You know, no, so over. you can do that, and uh, and I think that the sooner that you get to market, the sooner you're going to get your your answer, and you're going to find your way. You know, yeah. I love your niches, like cars. Yeah. Great niche. Right? Yeah, I was going to say you can target. You know, the like, like Mario Andretti and those guys. That's that stuff is going to be very popular. Because you can very easily target groups of people who like that type of content. And that's what makes the marketing easier. Taylor, you, you know how this goes. We're talking about this stuff all the time. Yeah, I was going to say, there is no easy mode to selling art. And I would never say there is. But when you have uh, work that clearly defined with such a built-in fan base, it could be more difficult, believe me. It could be more difficult than your situation. Yeah. So you've got a pretty clear path to go. I'll just tell you that. I mean, right there, that Mario Andretti shot alone like if you told me that was your only image i would say launch right. yeah me too yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah. Right. i mean we have people who launch all the time like painters who have two or three paintings and they already start making sales because it's it's not about the hundred it's about the marketing it's about starting the marketing now you know what i mean that's the yeah, only get, thing get it off the ground, get it off the ground. Yep. i got you all right thanks guys i don't want to use up all the time no, no worries kevin thank you you got it Okay, so um, anyone, like Kevin was talking about requesting a demo. We might as well just mention that, you guys. If you're interested in learning more about art storefronts, just learning more, right? Your next step is to request a demo. And what happens is one of our team members, like Reed, he mentioned Reed, um, will um, reach out to you and they'll take a look at your art, learn about you and your goals what, you know, for your business. And, and then they'll also show you everything you want to see, all the details of art storefronts, all the pricing, the way that it's broken down. So if you're interested in taking that step, then, uh, um, then you want to request a demo and the link is in the chat right now. You can click that link and just do it. It takes about 20 or 30 seconds. Um, and also, uh, we have a, um, I should mention, we have a, uh, a, cute, a fourth quarter special going on right now. 
to save some money to join our storefronts. We call it the, fourth, the Q4 special because the fourth quarter is coming up and it's the biggest art selling time of the year, you guys. So it's really like, it's ideal to get started soon so that you can get launched, you know, get all that stuff out of the way, you know, start marketing, start building some, some audience, some leads and things like that. So that when you go into Q4, you know, you're, you're coming in at least with a little bit of momentum. So yeah, there's a Q4 special going on right now. So it's a, it's a, it's another good time to join. Okay. Um, Roger Merchant, you are next. Just unmuted you. Hey, how's that? Great. Good. So the, the comments so far have been really helpful for me. Um, Excellent. I get clogged in the drain, and that's where I am right now uh, with obsessive editing of photographs and going back and looking at the website. Oh, I need to redesign. And I'm beginning to see you got to stop that stuff because what's happening, if I'm getting it, I go out and make the pictures, but I'm not getting anything out. Yeah, you can put it on a website, big deal, or you can put it on Facebook, big deal, but it's not getting out there in front exactly. of me. That's what I'm beginning to get. You got it. I'm retired. I've got a wealth of time, um, and you'd think I could use it a little smarter. Maybe I can. Um, my work photographically uh, encompasses 25 years in central rural Maine. It's, uh, in, I call it place-based photography, and there's a lot within that. There's a lot of diversity. There's forests, there's trees, there's rivers, there's mountains, there's national monuments. There's rural life, wilderness railroads. So I have a diversity of things that I find myself drawn to. And there is good quality work that comes in that. But I also heard you say something, you know, when it gets down to it, if you got some significant categories like that, define them and pull up the best 10 and work with that. Don't agonize over, oh, any more of it. Just kind of get it down to that. Is that kind of where the focus starts to develop? Yes. I love the way you're talking. You're, you're really mentally getting around like to w the way you need to think about, get, like, about like, what your business needs to do next. You're totally right, right? Like you're, you, when you're spending the time modifying the images all the time or you're belaboring over how many images should be on the site and all that stuff. Yeah. These, are, these are what we call low ROI activities, low return on investment activities. And by, by investment, we mean your time. You know what I mean? When I, when I think about myself like as an executive and when I teach, you know, when I'm mentoring the, the, the team members at Art Storefronts, I'm always talking about, you guys, you got to get a high ROI on your time, right? So you got to look at what you're spending time on and are you going to get the return on it? You know, is it there? And oftentimes it's not, you know, and I also say this, that, that you can go, I think you'll resonate with this, Roger, is you can take a project, take any project, doesn't matter what it is, right? And when you get it about 80 to 85% of the way there, let's call it like a B plus, B to B plus level, right? Mm -hmm. That like, you can get that done so fast, it'll make your head spin. Like I tell people like, like Taylor, I've told this to you before, right? You can, you can, if I, if you have a project to work on at our storefronts, you could get that project done in probably like four hours. But if you want to take that to an A plus level, you're going to have to spend the next month, right? And so the, the marginal benefit of that last 15% or 10% is very, very small, but it will cost you the majority of your time, you know? And so in the case of getting these images, like, you just got to get these images on the site. You just pick 10. You know, if you're like, you know what, there's 15 or 20 I want to put up there. Fine. Put 15 or 20 up. You're done with it. Start the marketing, right? Anything put that's... Keep, yeah, put the keepers up there. The keepers are the trout you keep from the trout hole, right? Well, keep, that's right. Put the keepers yeah. up there and let the rest go. And... But there's a there's a there's a question that I want to get to within this. And I know I jumped in and interrupted you, but it's like about what the website. I've got this existing website. And stepping into something like this opportunity with our storefronts, am I going to be designing another website, or I'm going to be using the current website, or I'm not even sure if I want to keep the current website going. But be that as it may. Um, is the site based through Art Storefronts? Yes. 
So we get, we have all of that. It's the best website that you can have for selling art. So some people join and you know they they move over slowly. That's very rare, I will say. It's only if they're actually making a lot of sales from their site. By that I mean like twenty thousand or more a year already. Otherwise, you move right over. We have and to let you know how simple it is, we have a we have a fourteen day website live process. We want you to get your site live in fourteen days. Okay, and so it's all templated. So there's not a lot of hard work you have to do. And we don't want you messing with the design or anything like that because it's all minimalist and it's all designed to be like an art gallery experience where your art or your photography is the design, okay? And, and, so, um, and, and it's all built out to get the highest conversion rates, right? And a conversion rate is the percentage of visitors that actually convert into buyers. So we want you to get this live in 14 days. We have a phenomenal support team to help you with that and all the guides and resources to do it. And so you're live in 14 days, you know, if not, if it takes you a little longer, that's okay. Like, you know, but let's say within 30 days you're live and then you are immediately onto marketing. So the first thing we have you do once you get live is you go, we call it the marketing launch workshop where you do this very first marketing initiative um, that uh, has worked really well for our members. So we want you to kind of kick off your marketing to do that, uh, do that first. And then from there, you follow, you move to the next step, which is you're following the regular art marketing calendar and you're attending the weekly private member workshops where we're coaching everybody and we're, we're guiding you on the art marketing calendar to make sure that you don't get stuck and things like that. So yes, you will want to move that over. It'll, it, and I think it's just, at that point, you're going to be properly equipped. And then you're like, you're working on the marketing. And that's the most important thing to us is because once you start driving traffic, mm. you need that website that actually can get the job done. You know, am I going to need that other website, the original? Nope. No, nope. it's gone. Yeah, because that becomes duplicative and that creates don't need it. more heartburn than anything else. Exactly. Like no, nope. you can simplify that, that, yeah, that that that's that low or ROI stuff. After a while, that's become burnout stuff. Exactly, exactly. And the low ROI activities is one of the biggest problems. I mean, if you guys, other everybody who's listening right now, there's a lot of other low ROI activities that you guys are all doing. And if, and this this is the reason why I say that. You know, I, I did a video on this. You can find it on our YouTube channel or probably somewhere on our blog but it's the number one metric of an art business, okay? The number one metric is lead acquisition. It's actually the quantity of emails that you are capturing every week or every month, okay? I, if, if I talk to any artist or photographer, I can literally, without even looking at their art or anything, I can judge the health of their art business by just having them send me how many emails they have collected over the last six months or the last year. I wanna see the trend, okay? Is, it, is that number going up? Is it staying steady? Because if you don't put leads into the funnel, right? The sales funnel, if you will, they yeah. never turn into sales. Only a percentage of leads are ever going to close. So your number one job is to spend time getting leads in the funnel. And that's what we want you focused on from a marketing standpoint. That's what our calendar, that's what our workshops are going to get you focused on. So anything that is low ROI, we're trying to solve that for you guys. For example, like art, like search engine optimization. You yeah. should never spend a minute on it. Never. <laughs> First of all, it's a low ROI activity. It stopped working 10 years ago. But at Art Storefronts, what we did to stop everyone, because they wouldn't stop talking about it, we built a feature called automatic art SEO. This is a benefit that we have by being an only art selling platform. Like this is all we do is work with photographers and artists. So the search engine optimization is automatic and it's done for you. Okay, it's done for you. So you don't spend a minute on it because it's a low ROI activity. If you end up getting any traffic from it or anything, great, right? But we know it's not going to change your business. So we don't want you spending any time on it. Same thing with print fulfillment, another big low ROI activity, okay? You could spend a gazillion hours on your prints, right? Like shipping them, printing them, talking to the printing company, going back and forth. That is not going to earn you one more sale. It's not, okay? And so we've tried to put together the most professional, uh, high quality um, print fulfillment program so that it's gnarlier than any of you guys would do on your own. I come from this background. So we've got the best print fulfillment guys, okay? And 
We are auditing their quality on a regular basis. We have contracts. We've got all this stuff. We're negotiating pricing. We're getting new features. All these, we've got branded boxes now. You know what I mean? So that like you're, you're, you've got a logo on your box. Like all these different things are in there to make it professional because I want you guys to stop. Stop worrying about it and just spend that, that the, the little bit of time that you guys are going to spend on your business or that you want to because you want to be creative is spent on high ROI activities, which is the marketing, getting your art out there in front of more eyeballs. You know what I mean? Because that's the only thing that's going to get you sales. I got to get the photographic product market ready and then put it out there. Bang. That's it. Not go through 10,000 other gyrations, which burns me out. After a while. Exactly. You got to, you got to just get it out there. You got enough content. Just get it out there. I bet if I looked at all the different gyrations, I'd be like, what are you doing? They all look the same to me. Like they're all good. <laughs> but to you, you know what I mean? You're spending so much time on it. You got to, you got to settle in on, on, you know, one and move on and just close that door. Don't, don't let it keep like, it's these shiny objects, right? Don't let that shiny object, like, just keep dragging you back. Thank you. You got it, Roger. Great questions. Great. Fantastic. Fantastic questions. I've got some uh, rapid fire from the chat real quick. We'll just knock out this whole queue. Uh, some Perfect. easy and ones then here. AD, Cindy, and Nathaniel, you got your hands raised. We'll go to you. We'll go to you next. Yep. Uh, Lori asked, do you consult in regards to pricing? Absolutely. We, we coach in everything to do with our business. I'll tell you, there's not uh, really a magic trick there in the pricing conversation. We provide a kind of starter recommendation markup percentage and then coach our members on how to, you know, regularly increase those prices. That's the goal. You're just, you're just always moving up slowly, uh, but there is no kind of magic trick where we're going to tell you the exact dollar amount that's going to make something happen. Uh, it's an ongoing conversation. We absolutely help you with it though. Yeah. So and you also, and you got to get to market. That's one of the key things that we tell you is like, you got to get to market. The market is your truth. No, I can't tell you. I have consulted for more artists and photographers, thousands more than probably any other person that exists on this planet. Literally, literally. Like, and so have you, Taylor, like our whole company has, right, at this point. And I will tell you that not even I can tell you your pricing. Okay, why? Because everyone's pricing is different based on their art, how long they've been doing things, and all of that stuff. The market is the ultimate truth. It's the ultimate truth for your pricing and it's the ultimate truth for your niche and for the images that are gonna sell. No one can tell you what those are gonna be. Oftentimes, it's gonna surprise you, more often than not. So you gotta get to market with some form of pricing, right? And then, and then if you're selling like crazy, then you start inching up. You don't just yeah. dramatically increase. You go in increments like 10, 15%. We will coach you on that, but that's how it goes. Susan asks, are there better days of the week than others to market to your audience? Uh, yes, there probably are better days than others, but uh, the sticky part is those days are unique to your business. So you need to be uh, doing your marketing regularly, consistently, constantly, and then looking back what happened. What happened in the last week, the last two weeks, the last month? Uh, what was making connections? What seemed to get a lot of visibility? Uh, that's how the process is done. There is no universal answer to that. Similar to the last question. There is probably better days. Uh, you need to find out what those are for your audience. And I'd also say that like, that's a very detailed question, you know? Yep. And, um, and I appreciate like how introspective you are like asking for that level of detail, but I guarantee you that your problem is nothing to do with the day of the week that is totally. the best to market has nothing to do with that. It's a, it's a couple levels above. It's doing the right type of marketing, spending your time on the highest ROI marketing activities, right? Doing the right things rather than doing the wrong things at the right time of day. That's where your leverage is, okay? That's where your leverage is going to be. Edward asks if there's a newsletter creation tool. Um, so for that one, we have a deep integration with MailChimp. This is like the most popular email service provider uh, in the US at least. Uh, so we chose to integrate with them rather than attempt to build something of our own from scratch. Uh, our, our time is better spent over on the art marketing side of, of uh, the, the RNA, RNA such, uh, area. Uh, so we leverage MailChimp. We recommend you use it. You can start for free for your first 2000 contacts. And from there we have uh, templates you can import to MailChimp with one click it opens it up. It's everything we want you to be sending. Uh, we also provide all the language for all of your sort of sales marketing throughout the year. If there's a major holiday 
uh, and we want to recommend you do something special for it. Uh, we don't just say do something special for it. We say here's an email uh, based on the last few years of this particular holiday, uh, what other artists have had success with, send something very close to this email. So it's a combination of easy to import templates and then copy and pasting our recommended language, making any tweaks you want, but using MailChimp to actually fire off the email. That's how that works. Um, Kelly asks if she can keep her domain. Yep, we'll help you point it over to your art storefront site. So it's just kind of re it's changing uh, where that domain leads from your old site to your new site. Very simple. Tamara asks, how do you stop people from stealing art from your website? For that one, we have a kind of host of uh, image security features like disabling right click and only displaying, uh, I'd call it like medium resolution images on the front end of your website while the super high resolution is private and only goes off to your printer uh, to actually produce the work. We have those features. The other part of image security to realize is that uh, if someone is obsessed enough, they'll find a way to steal your image. So basically what you want to do is equip yourself with at least kind of a baseline, good protection. You've got watermarking if you want that. You've got the right click off. It's not super easy to just right click and save the image. Uh, I think that's where you need to get comfortable because uh, a sort of true impossible to steal image I don't believe exists on the internet. Uh, that's kind of our approach to it. We've got all yeah, the features. Yeah, but but the other thing too is that um, your your high resolution image is never exposed, that's so right. you never have to worry about that. And if it, when it comes to image security, no one has image security like we do. Nobody. You can't right click. You can't drag and drop. That's one a lot of people miss to the desktop. You where you just that's drag true. and drop the image. Um, we have an automatic watermark feature, so you don't have to upload watermarks on your images. It's just automatic. Um, and you can, you can customize the watermark, actually, like make it your logo or whatever you want. Most people don't use that feature, um, but it is there. And uh, so we're, we're, again, we're just making it really easy for you. But, but uh, yeah, overall, we've, we've, uh, we've got um, very serious image security. That's all I've got. Okay, so I see Laura asked, uh, how did you get... How do you get people who might buy your work to see your new e-commerce website? Marketing, marketing. You got to solve the marketing problem. That's what, that's so the smart. main thing. That's our secret sauce. That's what we do as a company. We teach you guys how to market your business the right way to focus on the high ROI activities. How do we know what those are? It's all based on what everyone in our platform is doing to have the greatest success. We reverse engineer the success so that when you join our storefronts, you literally plug into the latest and greatest strategies that real artists and photographers in our community are using that you will know, you will know these people too, when you join, right? Um, you'll know what, the, and, and, and you will be doing what everybody is doing to create success. We do not tell you to do something that we do not have proof of success, okay? With other artists and photographers that work with us, okay? Where we've done these things with them, and then we reverse engineer them into playbooks, step-by-step step that you guys can follow. And then we coach them week in and week out uh, in our workshops. That's what's so amazing, right? How do you, it's like, how else do you know what to do week in, week out, you guys? Like, how are you choosing what to do from a marketing standpoint? Do you know how amazing it is that you actually have the ability to tap into what people who are selling hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, like are doing right now, last week to like create success? It's incredible, you know? And that's why we built this whole community, this whole thing at our storefronts. Like we're starting with what is creating success and we want all the members to know exactly how to do that. So the little bit of time that you spend on marketing, it's going to be like the most effective time that you can possibly spend. Okay, um, we'll go to the hands now to AD Alver Alverde, just unmuted you. You might have to unmute yourself. All right. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, so very informative. I appreciate everything so far. Uh, sure. I have a few questions. Uh, so one of them was about the website, uh, being able to keep your domain name. Uh, so that's cool. So I've got a domain name reserved, but I haven't built my website yet. So it sounds like the recommendation is to just use the art storefronts uh, website at the beginning. Correct. Uh, and how are all the art storefront websites 
it like do they all look the same or is there any way to customize it to make it look a little bit more like what I want it to look like versus like a photographer I do a lot of like pop art kind of stuff yeah we have uh we have first of all we've got like I, I think we have like 15 themes or 18 themes different themes okay. and then there's customization capability we just ask you to like we ask you to go easy on that just because like we have designed everything for the highest conversion rate and the maximum success. And so what we tell everybody is that like, go simple on any customization because we don't want that to be the reason why you don't get the sales that you're looking for. Right. And so you start off closer to with what we have. And then as you have more success, then you can, you know, then you can start like, you know, getting a little bit, you know, more aggressive with, with uh, risky changes as we call them, you know? Okay. Yeah, because uh, our, our, our style is very minimalist, right? So right. the, the, the we, yeah, we believe, we believe that like the right way to like provide an art buying experience is to mimic the in-person, like with galleries. It's normally white walls. There's no wallpaper. There's not a lot of things getting in the way because your eye should go right to the art right when they get on the site, you know? And so um, in the case of pop art, it's probably going to be like, you know, even more so. Uh, and so you were talking about uh, doing the art fulfillment yourselves. Do you have like a, a sample pack for the things that you offer? We do. Yes. So you can, you can buy a sample pack. We have uh, very, like, I think there's one or two different types of sample packs. Um, and then they'll give, uh, I thought I had one on my desk. Um, uh, yeah. You, th th you'll have printed samples of each of them and you can look at all the media types. I also recommend like, you know, a another way of doing it too is just, you know, buy your own, like, um, like a print of your own work in a very right. small size. It's very inexpensive to do that. Like buy, buy one on canvas, buy one on metal or whatever. If you want to like, just see the, the quality or like the different media types. Okay. Uh, some places that I've, um, work with, like they, so like you sell it to, to the consumer for, you know, say $50, they get it to you for $20. Like you get a discount for buying it for yourself. Is that something that y'all do too? Absolutely. So we work with Bay Photo and uh, Graphic Dimensions. Those are our two fulfillment partners. And uh, you get exclusive pricing on the prints at Art Storefronts. So, okay. yeah. The, and so obviously you're going to mark up your, your uh, prints the way you want to, you know, to whatever price you want to sell them. But you have a fixed cost, you know, okay. for, for the uh, printing. You know what that is in advance. So uh, it was Graphic Dimensions. And what was the other one? Bay Photo. Bay Photo. Yeah, uh, these are companies you. that have very large, high quality, high reputation art printing companies. Um, both of them are like, I believe, 40 plus years in business. Okay. Um, worldwide shipping, you know, good rates, all that stuff. And, and the, the, they have the highest quality that you can get. And they also, you know, they also have like, you know, medium level quality. Some people like just only care for decorative art quality. And, right. and, and if you choose to go that route, you're, you're, you can have like way lower costs, but other people want the Ferrari. And so we've got the Ferrari. Okay. Nice to have the options. Uh, and for the leads, uh, like, what would you say, like percent of leads convert, like, you know, is it in the one to 5% range? Is it like a 20% yeah. range? It's usually like, I think Google says, you know, one of their stats is like a good conversion rate is like one to 2% when you're okay. doing like, you know, regular marketing and, and things like that. And, uh, so I would expect somewhere around a, you know, depending on how much work you're going to put in and on regular marketing, the more marketing work you do, the higher your conversion rates are going to be right? right. Because when you're putting leads in the funnel, you, you got to warm them up to move them down, you know? So I think, I think like kind of assuming a one and a half to 2%, if you're going to work, work at it is a good, good number. Okay. So like, I shouldn't expect to do much until I have a few hundred leads basically. Yes. And that's why you uh, want to be, that's why you want to be focused on this, right? Like, uh, on, on the lead generation, as I was referring to earlier, when artists and photographers are not working on, like the, when they're working on low ROI activities, they're not building that list, right? right? They're not building it. And it's like, and I say, you should be building that by like a thousand a month, you know, and then 2000 and then 3000 if you can. Okay. Right. Cause the more you do, the more you're going to compound that success. And, uh, I saw on the little, uh, small view of the, the calendar like it had a facebook or instagram post like four ish times a week uh if you've only got you know maybe 10 things that you're trying to sell 
is it uh what's the variety i guess like i don't want to be constantly saying like buy the same thing over and over again no uh, no no no. you won't be doing that so yeah. yeah so we've got a romance marketing we call it the romance marketing playbook okay and so and, and it, it, we're coaching you on all the various like types of content that we want you to publish so the part that you're missing you know and this will this will totally clear it up for you is that you know when you when you release a piece or you know let, let's say you're working on a new piece are you a photographer or a painter uh painter i mostly digital painting yeah okay okay so the content that you're missing is that when you're working on a new piece like I want you to, I want you to like go live on Facebook and Instagram and talk about what you're about to do, your inspiration. Okay. That kicks it off and that's right. So that's one. And then you're going to start it. Right. Then I want you to show a progress piece, like, you know, post an image with the progress. You'll turn that into, you can turn that into 20 or 30 types of posts. You know what I mean? And we've got this all mapped out for you, the way that you go about this, but you need to, you need to, you need to view yourself as like, like you're almost like a, like a living documentary as an artist, right? And like, I wanna know as like the art buyer, as the consumer, like to build a connection with you, I wanna know how you're thinking about this stuff, right? So like in the case of photographers, right? We have like, we've got a photographer who's in Louisiana and he takes pictures like of like the Louisiana like swamps. And so we've got him like, he, he literally is out in like kayaks, like going out like with alligators around and everything. And he wasn't showing that. He just like shows his print. And we're like, you got to get out there. You got to do a live video. Show people like he's got, he's up to, he's up to his waist in water, you know, getting this one shot. And so now he's doing all of that. And it's just incredible because it adds to the perceived value of his work because his audience is now like, not only are they connecting with him better, right? They're understanding like, whoa, this guy is going to like serious lengths to like get these shots. It takes on a whole new meaning. And so like the perceived value of the art is so much higher too. You're willing, people are willing to pay such a higher price because there, it's, it's, there's, there's actually an experience built into that product. It's not just an image like on a website. Okay. And uh, my last question is why do uh, not many people use the watermark feature? Just to add to it. I, I, I people combine it. It's, it's because I, I think, it, I don't know. Taylor, why do you think that is? Um, people are concerned it's getting in the way of people appreciating your work enough to buy it. Yeah, and I think, and, and here's the other thing. I think the best sellers on our platform, right? Like the most successful artists and photographers that are selling hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, not a single one uses the watermark. Mm. And so I think it's the mentorship when you start, you know, hearing from these guys and seeing these guys and you're in the community, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll get better information, right? Like, and it's like, hey, look, if these guys are that successful and they're not using them, why should you? And I totally agree with that. Okay. Uh, well, that's all I have. Thank you so much. Very interesting. You got it. <laughs> Great questions today, Taylor. Great questions. I agree. Great I agree. Questions. Good mindsets here. Great mindsets. I'm loving this. Um, okay, Cindy. Cindy Schechter, we're coming to you. All right, we're going to unmute you. Oh, Cindy, you're still you're still muted on your end. Taylor, are you clicking it or should I? Uh, I click it. Cindy, you'll see on your end it says the. Uh, there you okay. go. Yeah. Got it. Okay, great. Gotcha. Hi. Um, I've been an artist all my life, painter. Uh, currently doing some photography, which I studied in school. I taught art. I'm retired. I have built up a large number of actual physical paintings. I show in uh, local art uh, galleries, in shows. I've had solo shows. I sell on occasion. Um, I have my own website. My physical space is so overcrowded, I don't know what to do <laughs> for paintings anymore. So I- Time for a basement sale. Time for right. a basement sale. But you know I, how, do you know how successful we have, how, how, like, have you heard about this at all? About you? Your, well, your, your company has been emailing me for a long time. So we tend to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, so the, uh, the okay, so, 
we're really big on running live art shows. Like we've developed a whole strategy and a playbook for this, right? But one of the painters that um, we, that Patrick, my head of marketing, he's been running the live art shows with him because what we do, right? Like we we got to get our hands in the dirt and do these things. Oh, Taylor's gonna show it right here. So here's an example of like you can see like piece number one showing the piece doing that. Um, but uh, Taylor, you could you could you could drop it back. Yeah, so you guys get the idea, right? Um, anyways, we're co there's a whole strategy and a playbook to doing these things, but that painter had a similar situation. He had basement art that he was literally in his basement, right? Like just stacked for years and years of his career. And um, in, I think he's done, they've done three, we've done three or four shows in the last 60 days and he sold like 40 to $50,000 of his basement art. And he's just, he's like, his biggest problem right, like right now is the packaging and the shipping. It's like right. driving him crazy because he's like, I've got like a whole shipping department just shipping all of these old originals. So you should, you should definitely, you know, do that. Now, the real thing, the question is though, have you been building a direct business at all? Because like, you got to make sure you got, you got to have to have, a, a, you're going to need an email list and a social following to make right. live art shows work well, right? It's the chicken and the egg. And so you gotta, if you don't have that yet, it won't be as successful. You gotta do that first and, and, and build your marketing. Exactly, that's what I'm interested in. And it's also interesting because many of my, much of my work will work well with prints as uh, you, know, you were just talking about. So uh, I'd like to kind of do a combination of both and really get the marketing up. That's what I'm interested in. The marketing is what you need, right? The prints is a prints is another benefit, but the marketing is what you need. You know? Yeah. You know what? We study art and we learn about art, and they never teach us about sales and marketing. They're I know. Generally, terrible salespeople. <laughs> Cindy, what you just said right there is exactly why I built Art Store Prints. That is literally why, right? Our mission is to solve the starving artist problem. And I know that what we have to do as a, as a company is we have to create capable entrepreneurs. That's what we have to do. Yes, we're trying to help you have better marketing. And yes, we want to have the best product in the world. But I know that at the end of the day, like I've been an entrepreneur for my entire career. I've started six companies, you know, and you got to be able, you got to have like, you got to be able to make good decisions, you know, and um, it's all these different facets, right? It's marketing, it's sales. There's the business components, spending your time on the right things. And so that's what we're trying to do is, is uh, create this ecosystem where many, 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 many more people can become successful as a result of it. Okay. Yeah. Just, just this other question. When, you, when people select the print option from your site, you have a company that prints it and sends it out directly. Correct. To the customer. It's unframed, it's just the print. It's well, they frame too. So you have, all the fr you have all the framing options and all of that as well. So they, yeah, it's, it's completely hands off for you. It's, we call it automated fulfillment. So they will, as soon as you get a print order, it automatically notifies them. They, they do all of like the notification, like, like it's, in, it's in process, it's shipped with a tracking number. So your customer will actually receive those emails they will come from your site though, right? So they're gonna be automatically notified of all of that, that entire process and you don't have to worry about it at all. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Got it. Nice chat and Cindy, okay. That looks like that's it for the hands. So we can go back to the, um, the questions in the chat if there are any more. Um, so Nathaniel said, I want to keep my regular website, my fine art, I feel like should be something of its own category and totally completely different dog in the game altogether. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I, I don't know if you have a whole different strategy going on, but um, yeah, if, like if, you, if you're talking about like, should you have a dedicated fine art website? Yes, you should. Like if you're a photographer, a service photographer, like portraits or weddings or anything like that, commercial, like you're, 
you should probably like maintain what you already have for that because it's just different. Um, and then have a separate uh, website for your fine art. That should be your art storefront site. What some photographers actually do is, and we definitely recommend this if you're one of these, okay, is on your commercial photography site, uh, in, the, in your navigation, you have a link that just says shop art. And when they click that, all it does is open up your art gallery, which is your art storefronts art gallery website, right? And so it's very simple to keep things clean that way. Um, so when somebody goes to your art gallery website, it should feel like they just walked into an art gallery, not that they just stepped into a commercial photography business, right? That's why we like it having its own silo. Um, so that's usually the best way to do it. Uh, Laura, can we look at some of your sites? I've been a designer and art director for print for many years, so I want to design it myself partially. Is that possible? Uh, yes. Um, Taylor, what do we do for that? Is it in the show? I, I always forget. Is it in the show notes, or do they need to request a demo? People ask every single time. There's a list in the show notes. If you want to see more uh, on the demo, they'd be happy to show you. Yeah. Our, 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 uh, yeah, if you request a demo, our team will show you whatever you want to see, and yeah. it's in the show notes, so you can look at some of the sites. Um, yeah, but again, you know, be careful, be careful. Another low ROI activity, spending time designing your site. Hate to say it, but it's just, it hurts. It, it, hurts, but it's it really hurts. There's a, there's a, a great book for people who are, um, like really design oriented. It's called don't make me think. Um, and it's actually, there's like multiple versions now, but I have had my mind blown on this for years, guys, where you really think design is helping you. And when you actually look at the conversion rates in the data and you see that it's, that it's not and you've actually hurt yourself, it hurts. It hurts. Sometimes I, I've spent twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 on designs, website designs, you know, 10 years ago just to see. There was a time with my other company, Breathing Colors. Taylor, I don't know if I've ever told you this. Um, my, my, uh, uh, with Breathing Color, we did a, we did a, a complete site redesign, okay? And it was beautiful. The new site, we were so excited about it. Couldn't wait to roll it out. Way better than what we had aesthetically, right? We launched it and our conversion rates went down by 50%, which meant our sales went down by 50% in one month. And we were like, oh my goodness, what do we do? What do we do? You know, and it was, it was like actually hard. It was hard to abandon that site design. But sure enough, we went and looked at the data in Google Analytics and all that stuff. And, um, and it was very clear that it was the site. And so what did we do? We immediately reverted the site back just to make sure. And 24 hours, the sales went right back to where they were. And I just went, oh my goodness, this is unbelievable. I just, you know, forget it. That whole design is gone. It, it didn't matter to me. Like all that matters to me is the metrics. It's, it's all that matters, success, right? So um, be careful. It's a low ROI activity for sure. And I have never seen, we have yet to see at art storefronts, yeah. anybody who has custom designed a site ever get better results than our, than our uh, default templates. Yeah, I was going to say that. once. Never yeah. once. I, I'm still open to the challenge, but I don't think anybody's as gnarly and as scientific about it as we are. And so it's just, it's very hard to, to beat. Okay. Um, Kelly, Kelly Miller asked, can you give us a reader's digest summary of how to gather an email list? Um, no, I can't. That would be nice. <laughs> there's no way. It's impossible. It's impossible, right? There's, that's the thing, guys, is that there's no magic bullet with marketing. There's just not, you know? And, and it's like, like having a ha – solving your marketing problem is like – it's something that is – very, it's, it's, you know, you got to have a sophisticated marketing strategy. It's not one thing. It's all of these things working together. It's email, it's social media, you know, like Facebook, Instagram, right? It's the way you're utilizing all of these things together to, to make your marketing strategy actually click so that you can get a great ROI on it. Right. And, uh, so there's not, there's not any one thing that's part of the problem, right? When you're looking at like, when people talk about like, What's the best thing that I can do for Instagram right now? It's like, it doesn't matter what I tell you because it's not going to make any difference in your business. You've got to solve the marketing problem. 
that's the right question to ask is like, how do I really solve the marketing problem? Because I'd rather talk about that than any individual tactic. That's like a way better question, right? The way that we have figured out to solve the marketing problem is called art storefronts. I don't know any other way. It's the cheapest and most concise way of doing it. It's needed to happen in the industry. That's what we've done. The other options are hiring a marketing person full-time maybe, um, hiring other consulting agencies, marketing agencies. You know, Those are very, very expensive, 150 to $200 an hour. You know, uh, they'll oftentimes take you know, somewhere between 15 and 20% of your sales. Um, and so, you know, that's what you've got to look at. You've got to solve the marketing problem overall. Otherwise, you're just going to continue to be on that hamster wheel, trying one thing here, there. Maybe you have some success somewhere, maybe you don't. And by the way, never ever boost a post. We should just say that on every session. Don't ever boost a Facebook post ever. Never. Don't be a sucker. That is a sucker bet. It doesn't work. Don't do it. Okay. You know what it works for? It works if you want likes. <laughs> yeah, You'll get the likes. likes. Likes likes don't get you emails and sales. Facebook is really good at getting you likes. If you've never spent money on Facebook ads, we've spent millions. Trust me, I've wasted millions on Facebook ads. Okay? And it will give you, it is a very powerful robot. It will give you exactly what you tell it to give you. It will give you likes that are absolutely worthless. You know, like teenagers who will never buy you art. And you'll feel good about it. But at the end of the day, th these are not quality people on your list that are ever going to do anything. Please do not ever boost a post. The, oh, the other person you're going to make happy is Mark Zuckerberg. That's, but that's about, the, that's about it. All right, J-Dub. Let's do this. J-Dub's been around. Oh, wait. Uh, okay, I just unmuted you. J-Dub, you got to unmute yourself too. J-Dub's been around for a while, you guys. J-Dub, why don't I knock out your questions? Yeah, listen. Um, so here's what's going on. I spoke with the sales guy, and I hit him with a hard, like, like straight-in-your-face question, right? So if you have no following, okay, and what's it gonna, if, how long was it going to take to build one? And, and I know the answer is no one knows, right? I mean, but if someone well, says... What, 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 how long do you think it's going to... Let's just talk about business in general. Let's just talk business in general, right? Because I think that's a better way to talk about it. it. Steve Jobs has the famous line. Every entrepreneur agrees with it. It takes three to five years to build anything of value. Yeah, so I said, so I said okay, right. So it's, it's going to take a year to get two years to get, to get enough of a, of a client base to be able to start generating, you know, revenue per se. And the, and the sales guy's like, yeah, probably. I'm like, well, dude, why would I pay $2,000 for whatever it is and then hang on for two years? So why don't I just start building a marketing piece and and use some kind of funky email collector because I'm not going to sell fraud. And he didn't have – and I'm just being candid with you here. He didn't have – he just didn't have a good answer. And I'm like, come on, man. You should have a better answer than me to be able to give you a heads up on, on – well, let's, let's, let's walk through the logic, right? So you're starting from scratch, right? Um, number one, like your, your outcome, everybody's outcome is going to be different based on their art or photography and based on the effort that they put in and how smart they are, frankly. I mean, I'm dead serious, you know? Like everybody's got access to the same stuff. Why, why when everybody has access to the same stuff is like a photographer selling $35,000 in one month and the other person might be selling 5000 Right. It's, the, the variable is the individual and their execution and their artwork and all that stuff. Right. Yeah. But, but at the end of the day, Jay, like it's like I, what what is the alternative? Right. Like you're asking you're, you're saying like, well, I'm going to spend money and whatever. It's like dude, you're spending money for like lifetime consulting to plug into the latest, greatest strategies that are actually out there that are working for everyone. Right. Like what what else are you going to do? You're going to pay a consultant? You're going to do it on your own? Like, I mean, you can do that. It's going to take you – what I'll tell you is it will take you 100 times slower to do it that way. I mean, if you have all of the information and the wind at your back and the best technology, you're, don't you think that you're going to grow it the fastest that you possibly could, whatever that's going to be for you? That's the yeah. truth. If you don't believe that, then, you, then, then like, you, gotta, you, you should wait and, like, 
because your belief in our storefronts and our credibility isn't there. But I'm asking, what else is it in? Is it in another consultant? Is it in your own, like you doing it on your own? You see what I'm saying? So he may not have it. Yeah, no, I do. I get it. I, I, don't, I, I get it. I get it. I don't think, I mean, in retrospect, um, and the reason I come back and I continue to listen to, uh, to what you guys are doing here, what you're, what you're preaching here, I'm a big fan, obviously, and still here, is I, I don't, I, I think that the maybe, I, I, I don't think the guy, I would like to, you know, let's put it this way, I'd like to get a different guy to talk to maybe. That's like one of your best guys, where I can ask. Yeah. Well, I've been around. I've been in tech a long time. I did startups many times. I've been funded a lot of. I mean, I've I've gone through this and started many many companies. This is for me a COVID switch because everything else is going to a certain standard where I don't want to go run another tech company and be at the standard. So I've already done this in startups and worked on VCs and on been through all that. And maybe it's that I just can't. You know, I just gotta feel. I think I need to feel comfortable that the person's answering the questions that there really are to the questions, not that you like pay the money and get shoved into a group and go, oh shit, I know more than these guys, and these are these guys going to really help me. So maybe, yeah, yeah but I'm Jay, not being you did, you, you, here's, here's the thing. You've been, at these, you've been in a lot of these sessions, right? Yeah. And, and like, you, you just need to either get the business, what you need to decide is whether you're going to get the business a shot or not, you know? And if you're worried about, if you, I mean, have you not talked to any of our members? Like, Talk to them. You, I mean, talk. No, to like them. I said, that my experience was with the, was with the sales guys. Like, you know, um, they yeah, are, they, 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 these guys they're are not like, like they're not like sales guys. Like, they're, they're, they're first of all, I deli- like you deliberately train them and tell them like the, that the question you're asking is a dangerous question, right? Like, we are way more on the side of like we're not going to promise you anything. Like, we're not going to we're not going to. This is not a get rich quick. Like that that. That person has cannot tell you, Jay, what you're going to do. It, it, it's like it's asking like he can only lose. You know what I mean? Like he can't tell you what you're going to do. It's impossible. You're 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 buying this to properly equip yourself. You should be you should talk to our other members of ours and ask them like, is it worth it? Do we know our stuff? I mean, you're hearing me on these, and you're hearing Patrick. I'm usually at every one of these you know uh, workshops or most of them. So is Taylor. Patrick, the marketing team, like if you, if we don't, you know, there's a, there's enough content to interact with to see that we know what we're talking about. Yeah, no, no, hold on. Let me, let me, let me just clarify. Let me, let me clarify. Um, I, I've started a lot of businesses and, and been on the venture capital side and raised money. And I, so, and I, I want to say, first of all, you guys doing your thing every day and pounding it out and, and, and staying in it, getting on one-to-one with people is phenomenal. Um, there's nobody better. There's no one has anything even close, nothing. So I don't want this to sound like I'm being down on what you're doing or your content because I think what you're doing is great. I think the takeaway for me, candidly, now that we're talking it through, because nothing was wrong, I got up there like, dude, why am I not spending the money? You know, and I'm, and I'm coming back and listening to you talk. I'm thinking there must be something that got screwed up in the call or something that maybe I could maybe respectfully request to get one of your – don't call them sales guy. Call I, I, I have no problem calling them. Everybody's got to do their sales stuff, but that's okay. You call I think you will, it's like you're asking to be sold, and he's just not selling. But like I, that's not what we do. That's not what we do. I'm telling you. No, like, no, no, no. Yeah, you can okay. see. You can see how I'm like. We're, we we won't sign anybody up unless we believe that you know they're a good fit and and they can be successful. And what I what I'll tell you is like it's like you know a hundred hundred entrepreneurs start a company, right? Like, what's the percentage of success? The, or know? the attrition, a bunch of losers. I Exactly. It's like two percent. So, I know. Could, for it. could you do? Could you do fifty thousand or a hundred thousand in your first year? You could. But could you? Would you? Could you do also do a thousand? You could, right? Like every entrepreneur is different, it, it, depending on how much effort you're going to put in. I mean, there's people who, who like literally. I mean, I'm an investor as well. Like, and and like I do angel investments in, in companies, and it's it's a really fascinating case study. And uh, because there's, you know, oftentimes like the, the the only thing I care about is is the entrepreneur because if if they're gonna if they're gonna give up after like two or three months in the face of right. tragedy, even if they have a great product, they're already done. And I just say, you know, you're already done. Just stop. Don't even try. It's over. You know what I mean? Because you're, it's going to take time to build the business. So, but that's the truth for you. That's the truth. Like yeah, you no, could that's- do. 
X and you could do this, right? I, I mean, that's, that's just a tool. So there's a level of question and I, I, I want to keep, I'm, I'm concerned that I'm not answering this maybe how I want to, but there's a level of question from sophistication that you'd like to ask me with asking about specific, like whether it's a, a marketing question or, uh, you know, and with these getting a broad general broad stroke answer is I'm silly. You're like, well, I mean, I could watch a YouTube video and get a broad stroke on, on a answer versus like what, like what kind of marketing niches are working? Are there specific methodologies that are working? Are are there, you know, what are the like, not what are the what are the enough information on the details to be able to feel confident that the information being supplied is really real and really not just a generic. You know, like I don't watch all yeah, YouTube. Yeah, Jay, I I think I mean I don't know if you saw this, but like. I think I, th I think you just haven't seen the detail of what the marketing, the consulting product actually is, right? Like the 365 day a year marketing art marketing calendar. That's private. That's all of our proprietary strategy and information. I've written a lot of it myself personally, okay, for everybody, for because I want everybody to think strategically about their week and their month a certain way, right? Like this is this is done by like the leadership, right? And then we have every Tuesday and Thursday, we have a private workshop. Not this. This is not what we not what we're working on right now. That's this is like way, way high level. Two days a week, our marketing team, right? And this is where I'm on these a lot of the time too, is doing this, but we're going over the exact things that we're telling you to do, right? In the in the art marketing calendar. We're also, you're also on with all the other members. So everybody's reporting back their successes, what they did here, there, maybe a little different. And then everything goes back into the playbooks, right? So this is not like some, you know, something you could buy like a YouTube video on. This is like live entrepreneurship, like working on the business right. together. Okay. You see well, what I mean? So like, no, I do, I do. I'm, that, I'm, I'm back. I mean, I'm I, like I said, I'm back um, because I think what you're saying is right, and I'm, you know, I, I just think we're saying. I think I, I think yeah, I yeah, perhaps got to. Try. I'll pack it away. Perhaps I could speak with a different consultant. House. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, just, I'll, I'll yeah. get you. I'll get you another guy. Um, I really appreciate that. Yeah, but like, to give you like, I mean, there's no topic off the table either. When we do our, when we do our, our, our private sessions, like, you know, since I'm talking about Jonah, the, the photographer, you know, who sold thirty five thousand in one month, he's on the session and and he's asking me about negotiating. And I'm coaching him on negotiating a big commercial deal and everyone is on there listening. Right. And it's like, that just happened to be his problem that week. And you know, something that, that didn't revolve around like our art marketing calendar. He had a deal that came up from all the marketing he was doing. And he's like, I need to close this deal. But I'm like, they're asking for this. And I, I like, they were lowballing him. Right. So I coached him on the entire process on how to get that thing done. He came back like two or three weeks in a row. And then he finally got the deal done and he got, he got a great price on it. So it's, it's anything like we talk, like we're advising on, you know, how to negotiate with galleries, how to, how to get galleries to allow you to sell on your own website. You know, a lot of them are like, you know, apprehensive about that right now because they're, they're feeling like they're losing some power. It doesn't matter what it is, right? Like, so we're doing live human consulting like this. That's part of why you should want to join our store bus. That's why I'm still here. <laughs> I know you're still here. You're, you're here way too long, Jay. I'm telling you, you need to pull the trigger. You need to pull the trigger. Okay, I we'll just go. Gotta, I, I, I was done, dude. I had the, I was like, the check was ready to go, and I got off the phone. And I'm like, what? How come? How did I? Not I think I you can. Know. I think you can appreciate. He did the right thing at the end of the day, right? He did. Like, I, I'm happy that he didn't try to like sell you a dream. That it's like we're just trying to be honest, and like you know, he he didn't try to sell you a dream, and maybe you know that's the reason, but. But I think that he did the right thing. But I'll get you a new guy, and we'll we'll have him reach out to you today or tomorrow. Okay? Yeah, it's got you got to be able to ask questions get, and get specific answers. And, I, and I'm not asking for guarantees. I've been around a long time. I'm old, dude. I earned all this. But you know, I, but if he asks a specific question, a hard question, a guy's got to be able to give it to not go. Uh, well, uh, well, I don't know. Well, well. Uh, anyways, I do appreciate what you're doing, and this is not a dig at all on what on the overall. I think the overall, like I say. Just seeing you guys pound this out every day is mind boggling that you have the wherewithal and um, the commitment, the commitment to do it. So 
I'm, right. I'm a big fan, and I'm not trying to be negative. I hope anyone that's yeah, listening to it doesn't, doesn't spin this as a negative because it's not. Awesome. No worries, Gay. All right. I will make that happen. Taylor, can we uh, totally. make sure that gets over to um, – well, we'll talk about it after who it might go yeah, to. No problem. Yeah, we'll yeah. figure it out. Get it no on problem. our to-do list. Awesome. Um, yeah, like – I appreciate you saying that too, Jay, uh, as a close, because, you know, I think it's really interesting when, um, when you really think about like who you're going to work with and like what companies are really in it for your success, you know, like I think about galleries. I even think about like the online galleries, right? Like fine art America, you know, Saatchi art. Are these companies in the business of creating successful artists? No, they've never ever they've never even said that. They don't even claim to be doing that. Is a gallery in the business of creating successful artists? No, they've never said those words ever. Right? It's kind of fascinating. It's kind of fascinating. That is all we do. That is our entire business mission. Everything. It is literally all we do. We are in the business of creating successful artists. All of our interests are aligned. When you look at how our model works, our pricing, and like the fact that we're giving marketing consulting for life for the price that we do, there's only one way that we can even make that work. You know, we have to make you successful. And so there's no other businesses that are out there. I think it's a really fascinating thing for every photographer or artist to think about, not in the context of art storefronts, but like as a, as a human being or as a business person, shouldn't you have partners and shouldn't you align with, a, with the companies that are actually in it for the same outcome as you. And when you actually investigate that and you think about that, you go, whoa, I never thought of it that way. That's really interesting. These companies, they don't even say it. They don't even try to say it, you know? And so as a result, are there a lot of successful artists working using those companies? There's not, there's not, you know? It's, and that should not come as any surprise. Okay, let's go to Shane. Uh, Shane, had, uh, Shane Giordano, I just unmuted you. How you doing? How are you? Hey, Shane. Um, I got a question that's a little bit outside. I'm not an artist, um, but I do uh, represent artists, and I, I do the marketing for artists, uh, build websites, all that kind of stuff. Um, relatively successful. I have a glass artist. We've sold $3 million plus in the last five years, all online and through referral services and whatnot. Um, I have a couple of print artists. I have a jewelry artist. Um, I'm looking for simplification. Um, I don't want to build sites for people anymore. You guys have put together this, the secret sauce when it comes to And I've looked through a bunch of your different sites. I looked at the product about a year and a half ago. Um, my question is, for that kind of scenario, do you have some? So basically, um, I create leads for these individual artists a lot of them come from social media and we've developed you know my glass artist we have a 5,000 person uh email list already we have thousands of followers on different social media and then I have some artists that are just up and coming that I just recently signed on do you have a solution for something like that where I would aggregate these basically uh, th and, and my artists aren't like your art the people that are on this phone that want to do it themselves um, Barry Etner, who's one of my glass artists, he has zero interest in even opening a computer. He doesn't want to get involved in it at all. He's very successful. He doesn't want to deal with it. And he hired me to deal with it for him. And I do other things other than that. I run his business basically. But, and the same thing for Anthony Scotto, who's a muralist and he does, you know, a lot of, uh, custom paintings and things like that. Again, has no interest or any skill level to, to, to do this. Um, what would you suggest for something like that? Do you have a program for something like that where it's like a gallery based program or would it just be individual setups for each one of them? It would just be individual. Um, yeah, because every business, every separate business has to buy a membership. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, we potentially could do like a, we, we might be able to do like a volume discount with you if you wanted to move a bunch of them over. Um, okay. and operate it that way if, if that's what you're looking for. Yeah, my, my print guys, it makes a lot of sense because right now, <clears throat> fulfillment and doing, dealing with framing and, you know, it's just a pain in the ass. Oh, yeah, for sure. Remember. It's just, that's the, you know, and that's a part that I'm not even involved in, but they are, but that's kind of, it slows the whole process down because 
they have to get involved in that instead of just doing what they do best, which is make art. Um, so I, I feel now on the jewelry side, I'm not sure how you, the, the program works. And on the glass side, I think that he may be, you know, we do $100,000 chandeliers. We do, you know, $10,000 sconces, that kind of stuff. So most of our stuff is one off. We do carry inventory. We do have sculptures and things like I would say on an, any given time, we may have 15 or 20 pieces. Um, but there's no, there's no moving, you know, it, it, it is what it is. It's the piece. It's not like, so I, I feel like if this is more of a print thing. Is that what you find that you have a lot of jewelry and that kind of, uh, or am I better off keeping them where they are, where it's, you know, a I mean, we do have like sculptors and some crafters, pottery people, glass. We have some of them because you can, we have all of like the generic website features, you know, yeah. so you can sell normal products like that as well. But I think in your case, like what I would do is I would say like, I would probably move over like just the people that are selling like wall art, mm -hmm. right? Like originals, limited editions, prints, all of any of that, any of that, yep. even if they only sell originals, because then they'll be able to take advantage of like the augmented reality feature and the wall preview. And then with the prints, of course, like all the, the framing and the, the automated fulfillment and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and so I would probably move those over because they're, that's where the value is going to be. Because if you're doing the marketing for them anyway, you know, mm -hmm. then it's more yeah. about the technology for those people than it is anything else. And then after that, you, you may find that you like our software a lot, like all the features that we have in the back end that make it potentially yeah. a little easier to run the business. But I would call it like a phase one, phase two, because you may just, it'll also simplify things a lot, right? Like, Correct. You know, you can like, uh, we're using the same tools, MailChimp and all the, all the same types of things, Facebook, Instagram, you know, but the, the difference is aggregating that all into one spot and having, you know, I'm, I'm, listen, I want to do as little work as possible, to be honest yeah. with you. You know what I mean? A little, as, as little busy work as possible. And I kind of keep the, the macro stuff to like the ideas, the different campaigns, those kind of things. And when we do do things with email, email blasts and newsletters and things like that, I get involved from a creative standpoint, but automation to me is beats having to hire, hire somebody to do it or bring in someone to do it. It's just, so that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for ease of the, that back end. I love the fact that you can do any size print, any kind of, you know, uh, framing that, that print on different types of media. That is a lifesaver, especially when, you know, now we're, you know, with one artist is through Etsy, the other ones you know, has a, the, the PayPal set up with Shopify, like it's all over the place. Um, and to bring that all under kind of one roof would be the best. I think that's sure. uh, all right. So when you, one of your guys called me actually, Reed is that his name? Yeah. While I was on the, uh, while I was listening here, so I uh, I'll give him a call back afterwards. Yeah, let him let him know that that you talked to me, and, I, and I recommended like, you know, uh, he'll probably have to like, you, you might want to think about it first. Like, how yeah. many sites do you want to buy and at one time in bulk? Yeah. Um, do you want to do it that way? Cause like, an, like another way, like if the individual, um, uh, like if each one of those companies is going to actually buy the membership and have their credit card, cause you have to have a credit card on file for the, yeah. for the fees and the printing. Right. Cause it, it gets automatically yeah. charged when you, when you sell a print, um, then, uh, uh, like he, they can sign each of those up individually. We also have a referral program. Right. So you could have a referral fee for all of those. Um, and, uh, and then I can just add minutes. Anyone else that you refer over, you know, I mean, even though you're running it, it's technically a yeah. referral. So, yeah. Good. So, yeah, talk Thanks. to Reed about, talk to Reed about that. Figure out what you want to start with with the, the, um, the, the, with the wall art sites. And yep. then he can get you maybe a, a discount for, for a, for a volume. Great. Perfect. Awesome. Cool, Shane. Anything else? That's it. All right. Good chatting with you. Let's see here. Um, what about watermarks on on the on the prints? I notice when I click down the list for different crops, it crops out the watermark on my prints. Is there something y'all have or can build in to put the watermark? My watermark in there. Well, the watermarks are digital watermarks. They're they're not going to actually be printed. They're just on the website, rendered on the image, 
so that if somebody tried to download the image or took a screenshot, your image would have a watermark on it, but it's not going to get printed. Um, I hope that answers your question. Anything else, Taylor, that we have on uh, Facebook or, or any other uh, questions? No, we're looking good. All right, guys, we'll leave it there. Yeah. Hope you guys had a good session, got some good value. I thought this was a good one. Um, Me too. Oh, Nathaniel, did you want to have a, did you have a last question? Did I just see your hand up? Yeah, I'll, I'll unmute you. Go ahead. Hey guys, how's it going? Good, how are you? Hey there. Hanging in there and trying to get through all this COVID mess and that's pretty much where I'm at. You know, I'm on furlough most of my jobs and uh, I'm, I've been doing portrait photography, fashion photography, uh, fashion for so long. I've been trained in multiple, you know, aspects of photography my entire life, 25 years plus. Started when I was about 13 years old with a little handheld, you know, <laughs> one of those little 35 millimeter point and shoots. And yep. Now I'm here shooting DSLRs, and uh, I think that's the other thing. You know, a lot of people don't understand the value of a of a picture because they just snap, snap, snap. They don't realize, you know, back in the day, every time you did that, yeah, it's so expensive. Oh, for sure. Know, it's just so expensive. So. Um, but I, I, I use that in my practice now, you know, I don't take a picture unless I know it's a, a chance, at least a small chance of having a really beautiful shot, but, um, I'm getting more into nature photography, more into landscapes and stuff. And that was the question I was having in fine art. And, um, I know it's like when I go through those, uh, uh, labs that you had mentioned, uh, several labs, I have a little signature watermark that I like to put like artists do on the corners of their prints or wherever they have on their print. And I'm not sure, like, there's different opinions. A lot of people like that. That way it it it, it brands their their work. So whenever people see it on, like, their fireplace or on the wall or in a mural or whatever they have it, in the bathroom in front of your urinal, you know, whatever, uh, that they know that someone sees that and says, wow, you know, where did you get that print? Who is this, you know, photographer? And that, I, I think in a way that's where, where my mind goes. I like to preserve my name. So I, I was wondering, that's what my question was regarding is like when you do those prints, is there a way that I can ha still have that signature watermark on that edge of the print whenever y'all print out my work? The prop, the 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 only problem that I've seen with people with the with the like the signature right is like with the automated fulfillment. It's like hard when like if you're offering like right, right. And some people, you know, uh, I, some people are doing it. And you know what I would tell you is after you join, like in our private members group, our our private like the private forum is is asking in there what people are doing for for that. The general recommendation is not to do it. Um, and, and the only reason I say that, and I'm kind of big on, I'm, I'm, I see your point. I definitely see your point. But the, 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 the counterpoint to it um, is that, you know, we're, we're, we're seeing a lot of success with utilizing signatures as an upsell, as like right. creating a, a collector item more, you know? And it might not, it doesn't have to be a limited edition, but like, but like if you, if you have your signature on every single print then you're already just giving it away, you know, and then right. it comes, then it becomes hard to create something special. And when, where, where you want something special is when we're doing these live art shows, right? That's where you're able right. to create these amazing, like you might create like an amazing, like five or eight pieces that are signed and may include something else in there and whatever. And they're one of a kind, right? And then right. you do these live art shows and then there's scarcity, there's urgency there. People want to like grab that piece because like that's right. the one that you find. And so you can create sales out of thin air, you know, by making that stuff happen. And so that's the, that's the counterpoint to it is like, you're, you're kind of getting- You're saying like actually like a legitimately sign like my artwork. Signed. It sells more than like uh, that, that little piece. Cause uh, and I want a, uh, uh, what was it? I think it was a 20 by 30. Uh, Peter Ralston, I'm not sure if you know that, who that photographer is. Sounds uh, familiar. Peter Ralston print from, I uh, can't remember the name of the 
New Media or something like that. Uh, it was up at Photoplast Expo back in 2013 with my first year doing uh, press media for them. And I, you know, scanned my little tag and won, won that print. And it, uh, when I got it at the time, the value was $1,500, which I was thinking at that time, uh, can I just have my $1,500, you know? <laughs> But it's a beautiful print. But now, you know, I kept it, you know, just for sake because it's a beautiful print of uh, sheep that had just been shaved on a boat uh, out in the middle of, uh, I can't remember where he said it was, but it was a beautiful print. I just held on to it for whatever reason. And that I just looked at it probably a few months ago and the value shot up, like the price tag shot up to 15 grand. So, uh, and that, that's where I want to go with this. I, I would like to have like that value of my print to be able to escalate uh that makes any sense well you know there's a different like uh, the way to do that is to actually do limited editions right right signed and numbered that's that's the real that's what it was it was signed and numbered yeah there you go like that's that's completely different than just open edition you know just signatures on every one you're just giving up that digital signature for no with no extra value you know so if you want to be if you want to start selling like 750, 1500, 5000 dollars you know, per print, then you do, then you go the limited edition route. And you sign right. it, you actually ship the print to you, right? And then you sign and number it and you ship it to the client. We actually have a yeah. very, very like seamless way of making that happen. Okay. Is it like forward shipping? Like am I still paying the shipping on on top of that? Or is it yes. just okay? You have to, right? Because you have to ship it to yourself. But right. because the because the the price of a limited edition is so high, right? Like your profit margins are so high, um, right. that it's not really a big deal. How many? Like, what what's your recommendation? I guess on how many? Uh, oh, my headphones are dying. Um, what's your a uh, limited? I guess edition recommendation for like a, a, a good number of limited edition prints. Cause I see people like making a hundred and I'm like, that's not really a limited edition or, they or is that. it? I mean, they, they, yeah, they do that. I mean, 50 to a hundred, you know, is very, very common, but you, you can go any way you want on this. Like there's guys who do, like, I know a guy who does limited editions of four and each one is a hundred grand. Oh, wow. It's just like, and then they're, they're gone. And he's a photographer. Like that's all he, it's like, they're gone, right? So they're almost like originals. Like they're just, they're that limited. So, you, I mean, it's really, it's really a marketing play, you know, like how many you do. So, you, and, and what I would say is, this is another one of those things that you want to experiment with. You have to experiment okay. with it. Like you'll, you'll, with one image, try one that's like 10, try one that's like 50, play around with it, see how it goes. And then you might find a sweet spot. All right. I had accidentally subscribed to some stupid website uh, by accident. It was like a premium code that I put in, and I guess it was I, I clicked on it, and I just paid four hundred dollars for nothing. So I, I was like, "Crap! I can use that for you know art storefront." So I've been a great investment there, but um, I've been using different websites just to see what the the response is to these different art pieces that I'm mentioning. These different, uh, a lot of them are waterfalls. A lot of them are just uh, unicorn state parks. Uh, like snow skates that I've shot, um, you know, where the lighting is just amazingly beautiful. And I, I, I was just trying to get a good, res- like, get a response as to what people were thinking. It's been very, very good. So, oh, that's was, great. So, on that hand, it, it was kind of worth it just to know, okay, do people actually like my work or am I just, I don't want to, you know, just go out there and waste my time. You know, I know I value it. You know, but I didn't buy like a, you know, just buy a three thousand dollar camera, to, you know, for it to sit on my desk or to, for me to value my own work. It, that, that's what art's for, right? So people can appreciate it and exactly. I guess enjoy it with you. For um, sure. But I, I want to make sure that if I invest in 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 y'all, that my the, the the return investment in me, I guess, is going to pay off. That I'm going to see that that response, that same equal response that people are not going to just give me likes because, you know, I, 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 you know, I can pay a like. If I really want, was desperate enough for likes, I would just pay some agency. You know? <laughs> exactly. but I, I don't care about it. I want money, you know. I'm, 
I, I'm a broke, starving photographer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, I mean, like that's, that's part of the, that's part of the reason why we always say like, you know, if you've never sold any art before, like, like go sell a, a couple pieces, you know what I mean? Like buy a couple prints, offer them up on social media. Like there's, we have a whole strategy for this. It's called the validation playbook. Can we get that? Yeah. In the show notes? Um, you should check this out, but like, uh, but the point is like make a couple prints, um, give a great deal on it. Um, tell people that, you know, this is what you're going to, you're planning on selling it for because you're starting a photography, you're going to start selling your photography prints and say, but these three prints, because I'm getting this off the ground, I'm going to offer them at a 50% discount or whatever. You're only really trying to test the validation, right? Like right. People buy these, because if you get that validation, you're done, you're ready to start your, your business and you're ready to join our storefronts and just kind of go from there, you know? Um, yeah, and the question is always how much is it really worth? Is it the value of what I value it as or is it the value of what someone else sees it as? I might want to sell my print for $10, you know, uh, something I truly treasure that someone else thinks is worth, you know. And I think that's the that's the really hard, tough question that I, I guess that we all wrestle with is what is it really worth? You know, is it, And there's no way to get there until you just start selling. Right. There's no way to get there, but we, we recommend a 250% markup, like by default, when you jo join our storefronts over, over your print cost. Okay. Right. And like, it's very simple to do that with our software, but that's generally how you might think about it. So if it's like, you know, a $50, if, if, if the print costs you 50 bucks, you know, what does that put you at? Right? Like 250% was that like 250 or 300 or something like that. Um, yeah. but, but with, with the, with what with that strategy I'm referring to, you might say I'm planning on like you know selling these at three or four hundred dollars, but you know for these few pieces, these five pieces or these three pieces, I'm going to sell them at one ninety nine because you're really just looking for validation, right? And then you'll raise um, your prices over time depending on what the feedback is, or you'll you'll start doing limited editions, for example, right? And you just start somewhere. You just like. Hey, what's a you know a good price starting price for a limited edition? I think like seven fifty, you know. Start start at seven fifty, right? And then go to twelve fifty, then go to two thousand, right? Like you'll you'll see if they don't sell, then there's no reason to continue raising your price, you know. I'm attached to a sample JPEG, uh, small resolution print to like the chat things. Y'all can I guess get a sample of it, of one of my pictures. Okay, I'm trying. It's going really slow for whatever reason. I have no idea. <laughs> it's yeah, just... I made sure, yeah, I made sure that one of the things that I have here is fiber. So that's, and I do a lot of video editing, so it takes, takes forever to upload if I don't have fiber. So, but I mean, that's just, that was just a sample. I, I, I felt like, I, I feel like you guys are trustworthy that you're not going to just go sell it. <laughs> but uh, that's why I just want to give you a sample of like what, what kind of what, I, I am trying to sell and display. It might be faster if you send me a link. Is there a link anywhere where we can see it? It says, uh, hmm. Taylor's got his thing up. Do you have a website or anything that we can look at it or a Facebook page? Oh, there, uh, I don't oh, have that it. On, is that yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, there it is. All right. Beautiful. Yep. It's totally beautiful. That's what, yeah, that was my little watermark on the side. But like, I, I'm gonna take your advice as far as the signature thing. I, I like your idea. That's very unique. Yeah, and I think you know your your key is going to be from a marketing standpoint. Like, what's gonna really build the value and like sell these pieces is like the location you're at, the um, the meaning behind it. Do you know what I mean? Like, like what what is all of that there, right? Like, because I always say that like the way you want to think about selling art, it's like art is not just a physical good. This is, this is the big mistake and the problem with the sites like art.com and fine art America. Right. It's just cold image images, no meaning, no experience, nothing. Right. That's where, right. that's how you sell really cheap art. It's a race to the bottom. The exact right. opposite of that is what you want to do. Okay. And it's, you know, the, the, the art is actually the product, not just the product alone. It's the product plus the experience right? Right. Good plus the experience. And so the experience to the buyer is 
there's got to be something that resonates with them about that shot, right? It's either they've been there or they know the area or, right. they, love your, or they love your inspiration on it. Right. You know? and that's and, where I'm going. Yeah. It's like, I want, the, whenever I, whatever pictures I take, there's always a meaning behind it. There's always, I want you to feel something when you look at it. Because my, my slogan has always been, don't just take a picture, capture life. That's always been my slogan. Because anyone can take a picture, but you, when you take a picture, the whole idea is to capture that moment in time. Exactly. And then, like, whenever you look at it, be able to, like, literally stand in that moment as if you were reliving it all over again. And that's where I, I have, that's always been my slogan forever, since I can remember. Um, and I, I want to make sure that whenever someone buys my work, that either one, it inspires them to go there during that time of year, that season. Uh, to try to find out where that picture was taken, you know, and, uh, you know, just be like, hey, this is where, the, this is where it was taken and match that picture or, you know, remember what it was like to be there while they were there and then want to revisit during that season or that time or place or just because it, it's something refreshing. I don't know. Let me just tell you something like you're going to be very successful at this. Yep. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Because the fact that you actually care about your customer the way that you do, it's the same reason why I'm on this, helping you guys, right? Like, I appreciate that. It, 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 like, if you really truly care about your customer and you really truly care about the experience that they're going to have, in your case, with your art, and like, you want that feeling to be there, that's ultimately what's going to make it successful. And I'm telling you, like, it's, that's why we call it romance marketing. We actually came up with <laughs> phraseology. Cause it's, it should be romantic, right? Like in the I sense agree. that like, you know, like when I have that art on my wall, it shouldn't just be like, oh, cool. Like nice image. It should be like, there's a whole experience there with it. Right. You know? And so that's how we're teaching everybody how to market. And a, a lot of people don't have that. And that's their biggest problem. Like you're in it for the actual end user, your buyer. And I can't tell you how much like my confidence in you just literally shot up like through the roof. In a way, I guess to me, it feels like a disrespect to my customer or client. If if I sell my work like undervalued, then technically I should be paying them to buy my work. Like literally, like if I'm selling my piece for fifteen hundred dollars and they don't get what like they, it's just it's a waste of money. I right. I should be paying them multiple what they what they purchase it, purchase it for. If they're not getting that same experience or right. more. Yeah, like they should get that much value back in right. their life, in their day by, by buying that piece. Right. Exactly. You're totally right. That's the way that, that's the best way to go to approach the business and to approach the marketing. I wish everybody thought that way. Everybody should be thinking that way. It's pulling teeth to get people on that track a lot of times. You're already there. What if it is all I have to say. And, and that's the thing is like, that's where I, I would encourage you, Nathaniel, don't worry about the, don't worry about the pricing. Like, don't get hung up on that. Worry about what you just talked about. Do that well, and you will not lose. I promise you. Because everything right. else will get, will work itself out. You just need to create happy customers and give value, right. right? Like the world is not that complicated, you guys. People try to reverse, like they try to do it top down rather than like start at the end and work backwards. We at Art Storefronts, all we do is, all we care about is customer success, right? And we work backwards from that, right? Like what right. is successful artists, you know? And then how can we do more of that, you know? Not, not, can we create a product for artists that they can use somehow, right? That's, that's top down. Start with the end. If you start with the end, the, the whole thing is entirely different. So you as a photographer, if you start at the end, like I really want to like, I'm, I'm doing this because I want to provide amazing value in their lives. Like I want to like brighten their day. That's what I'm really after. If you do that, you're like, ultimately you will do that. Okay. And then you'll be able to iterate on your pricing and your limited editions all you want, because the problem that you're solving is actually the biggest problem. Everybody else that's worrying about their limited editions shouldn't worry about their limited editions and their pricing. They should worry about creating amazingly happy customers and being obsessed with their customers and providing value in their lives and learning what they want to, because ultimately that's what makes the world a better place, right? If you are right. providing a product that makes the world like that, that a lot of people want to buy, 
It's because you've made their world better. You've brightened their lives, you know? And that's the only way a business grows at the end of the day. I guess I have a funny thought just now. Like, I, I want my print to be like the last print they see before they go under anesthesia. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I I want them to have that, or before, just even before they go to bed. It, it, you know, I want it to be that warm company. Like I just had a really crappy day, or I'm waking up in the morning. That is an amazing shot. It's going to be a great day. Exactly. You know, there you go. It, I mean, we're still here. You know, we still breathe. That's a great day. If we can wake up and go to bed and wake up the next morning, that's a great day. And I, I, I think it, that's what my goal is to give someone hope and inspiration to look forward to that next day. You, you infuse that in and you're going to be, you're, you're going to be in a great spot. I appreciate that. You got it. All right, Nathaniel, thank you. Um, we'll go ahead and leave it there guys. Thank you everyone. And good to see you all. Thank you. Um, great session, Taylor. Yep. Really was. The better ones. Awesome. Yeah. Good job uh, to all of you guys. I love everybody that's here. I always think that like, it's always the highest quality people are the ones who are here because you guys are actually serious about your business. You have no idea how many artists and photographers contact us on a daily basis that join our blog. Hundreds, hundreds every day. But there's only a select few who come to these sessions who really care. And so it's always good for you guys to know that you're actually part of that, that very small percentage that's actually has a chance at being successful and building your own successful business. So kudos to all of you and uh, we will see you next time. Thanks. Yep. Grab the Q4 sale. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you guys next time. Exactly. Grab that Q4 sale, request a demo. All right. Until next time. Bye.